You are a bunch of fucking assholes. You know why? You don't have the guts to be what you want to be. You need people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So, what I make you? Good? You're not good. You just know how to hide. How to lie. Me. I don't have that problem. Me, I always tell the truth, even when I lie. So say good night to the bad guy. Come on. The last time you're gonna see a bad guy like this again. I've been watching you. I, I've been watching you. Fez show on what should be a big happy Friday. Now feeling a little bit more like part two. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. I know I only have one guy on my staff that wants to come anywhere close to me today. Everybody's hiding. Didn't set up any of my stuff, the Pal Talk stuff. This was going to be the big fun day. O and A were going to stay over. Go over this Fezzy thing. But it's part two.
Perfect. Just walking up the street. Say an ambulance out front of our building, and I think to myself, all right, when I left my house to walk over here, everything was fine. St. Amblin's out front. That can't be ours. That cannot be here for us. Then I see Earl Douglas being pushed into the ambulance. Ah, what a pain in the ass. And I guess my entire staff is either hung over or wired. Because why not use this uh, premise as just a chance to, instead of thinking, hey, how can we all make something cool for the whole team, the whole channel, the whole company? Hey, how do I turn this into fun little party time for myself? All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. find a way he always finds a way it's amazing now he's at all these people going straight up the corporate ladder paying attention to something that he has now done dozens of times the slightest bit of stress and the fainting goat hits but of course I'm not allowed to say that because the EMTs were here and we have to act like let's let this all go through. Let's make sure he gets the sign off. It's like a crazy girlfriend. He's absolutely like a crazy girlfriend. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous that this is a radio show. Daniel, Daniel, you're on the Ron and Fez show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Ichi Bond. What do you got, man? Oh, you shit the bed again. Florida national champs. When's the last time Oklahoma was uh, national champs? How far back are we going? Uh, 2000 was the last time we beat Pete. So really, I mean, you know, you got a uh, you got a championship in this decade. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but I mean, we've lost three national championships in five bowl games straight. It's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, there's uh, two places that seem to be snake bit, and that's Oklahoma right now and Ohio. And uh, we've talked about this on the air before. When a team takes you to those heights over and over and over again and drops you you start to lose years off your life. You start to look around like you, uh, you you no longer can taste food. Exactly. Now, here's the other problem. You live in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. You, uh, I would tell you, go take a walk along the beach today, clear your head, but that's a 2,000-mile drive. There we go. <laughs> See, I, I, can't, I can't live like that. i got to have open water. i got to have open water no matter where I'm living or I feel like I can't breathe. Uh, Greg, Greg, you're on the Round of Fez show. Yeah, how you doing, Ronnie B? Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I got to tell you, I feel for you. Uh, I hate to see you once again have to pick the show up, carry it around on your back. But uh, as long as uh, as everybody's out and we're, uh, we're running this new goat fed bit, I, I, I really got to put this out there. Where's Soundboard Fed? Bring the guy out. He's, he's pure magic. Well, that would mean that the producers have uh, set some things up and did some jobs. And, uh, oh, what they like is Budweiser's. We like Budweiser's. That's our big thing. Like fucking children. Just like fucking kids. It's like having the Navy on leave with these fucking guys. 
that no matter what happens when you're out to sea, the second day you get in, they just fucking uh, act like fucking babies. Just act like babies. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, oh, it's my old buddy, Cigar Sid. How are you, Sidney? Oh, fantastic. Great show last night, Ron. It was so it. much fun to come in here and do that show last night. I was having a good time, but I saw I was the only member here that was into the radio part of it. The uh, Everybody else like was that. into the, we're staying up uh, late and we're away from mommy and allowed to do whatever we want. I, I didn't Fucking get that babies. vibe, especially when Dave got really drunk at the end. Well, uh, the last I saw Dave, he was grabbing a, uh, a taxi at fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. And the next time I see him, uh, the place is a mess and fucking Earl's being hauled out in an EMT. Well, so I, I hope there is no sympathy for Earl. He is 100% faking this. Uh, last night, he, on the Pal Talk, before you got there, 100% useless. Uh, he wouldn't even talk when Dave left the studio. It's just him and Mooch. See, here's the deal, though. Say a word. We're not allowed to say that because it's the corporate situation and everybody wants to cover their own ass. And, oh, I got to make sure I do this. You know, and I understand that completely. But at a certain point, there's enough common sense to say Earl does this over and over and over. It has happened so many times. I think it was like three years ago. I was uh, telling him, you know, I want to see this or something. I was. And I guess I had him uh, upset because I was yelling at him a little bit. And he starts walking towards the door and faints and smashes his head into the door. And then we have to spend the next week of, uh, I had my test there. And I got, uh, if it's happening during the show, I have my chick go over with him and sit there. Because he's going to let people uh, do brain scans on him rather than saying, I got some work done. It is a ridiculous thing. And now, of course, Danny's sitting around. He can't have a relaxing weekend. O&A can't have a relaxing weekend. The bosses can't have a relaxing weekend because everywhere up the the pay scale and the and the job scale, everybody's got to act like, well, have I done everything? You know, if I get called into the carpet for this, does it look like I'm taking this serious? It's just fucking crazy. It's crazy what everybody will do, not just to be cool. It's the opposite of fucking cool. It really is. And God forbid that we should fucking do a, a night show without people calling their friends and having them show up and go running out of here at fucking three o'clock in the morning. When I told that fucking guy, go home. You have responsibilities at home. So if I can't, but the fucking thing is, it's like this. They want to say, oh, Mr. B, what I want to do is make your life more fucking hectic. Make your life more of a fucking pain in the ass. It seems like you have one part of you that isn't pissed off today. Let me be there. Uh, let me go to John. John, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, I thought in a post-Obama world, Earl was going to have to be as responsible as everyone, uh, everyone else. Anyone else? Would have been fired long ago. Well, this is the only thing that has me concerned. Every time that something happens, is Obama going to faint? Is Obama going to feel the need to uh, faint? Uh, Brian, Brian, you're on the Run of Fed show. Ronnie B., I am really sorry for your losses this morning. I want to send you a, a box of the, your favorite cigars. But first of all, uh, Ronnie, I believe that Earl holds the record even over Rocky. If you count every Rocky movie since you boys have come to XM, I think, Ronnie, uh, that uh, Earl's hit the canvas more. You know, and here's the deal. The new bosses do not understand that, and there's no reason that they should. So I come, uh, you know, up here. I see what are they, your cigars, they, Ronnie? Uh, I'm going to put you on uh, in with uh, Scruffy. But I come up here, I see that the bosses have O&A in a meeting, so I go kick it in the door. Hey, I've seen this before, blah, blah, blah. They've got Steve in a meeting. They've got Danny in a meeting. And it's all because of this, that it's easier to have drama, to do a fucking slip and fall, than it is to be cool and take care of things. Maybe I'm fed up. 
Maybe I'm fucking fed up. Maybe it's no fun for me either. I spend all my fucking time telling people why this should be fun. Why this should be a great fucking time. And fucking years are starting to go by. I should not show up here on a fucking Friday and see everybody um, upset and worried about their fucking positions because uh, this, uh, somebody sprayed something. Come on, man. Jesus. Should be the funnest fucking gig in the world. All I see is problems. You think I want to come in here and feel responsible for fucking O&A and being some kind of heat? Or fucking, uh, you know, Danny or Steve or even the bosses. Why should some guy uh, have to hear, uh, hey, uh, you're assigned as the program director over there. What the hell's going on? And you're wondering why they want to pull us out of the clubhouse and drag us down the street. I would, too. I'd fucking put us under a microscope. It's like here and there's a kindergarten and there's no fucking teachers. It's like a kindergarten with knives and guns is what this place turns into. Because everybody doesn't want to fucking man up. Act like it's a big fucking deal to go out and have beers. You work in fucking radio. That was your fucking dream. If your dream is to fucking blow that off and go partying, then make that your fucking dream. I turn around here at 3 o'clock in the morning. I see fucking Radio Shark. The stink bomber fucking sitting in here. In the meantime, I had a world-class fucking comic sitting on a fucking bench in here with no one bringing it up. Not one fucking person on my staff bringing it up to me. Uh, and only telling me, oh, he just wants to watch the show. I don't have a fucking producer. I don't have one fucking guy I can trust to say, that guy's got my fucking back today. Walking up and seeing everybody else in the station. Fucking being manhandled by the bosses. What exactly happened? Going over it step by step. Ridiculous, man. What the fuck am I doing here? Why? What am I? The only one who... F I can fucking go off and do something else. Come on, guys. You're on satellite fucking radio. No one has had the kind of freedom in the history of fucking radio that we have here. And everybody fucking shits all over it. I worked in fucking factories and I didn't see guys leaving in fucking ambulances as much as this place. Jesus Christ. Uh, here's uh, Bruce. Bruce, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I got your fucking back today, Ronnie. Uh, anyway, I was just wondering if you heard about uh, Larry Flint and the guy from uh, Girls Gone Wild playing the bit of asking the government for $5 million bailout money for porn. Well, the porn industry is in major problems, in the, and the reason is women are willing to now uh, be naked on the Internet for free. They, I, I don't know what the, uh, I mean, just take some time on the internet and start to count the number of women that you've now seen naked. And you're going to start and think to yourself, is there anyone, is there any women left? Is there any women left who are not part of the amateur porn business? Uh, Justin, Justin, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey there, Ronnie. I tell you, you got the gift for gab, and you got a you got a position down here in this car dealership if you want it. Where are you at, Justin? I'm down here in Albuquerque. Let me just say this: at this point in my life, I stop everything that I'm doing, and I go and start and sell fucking uh, cars in Albuquerque. I like right. it. It sounds all like right. the beginning of a, a movie. I throw away all these fucking positions, 
all this fucking problems of trying to keep up with everybody. And I just start uh, selling used cars to fucking Indians. Selling uh, used cars to fucking Mexicans. I think that might be the job I'm looking for. Just a fucking start fresh, a do-over. Let me put you into this, Jose. Let me tell you something, Running Bear. You look fantastic in this convertible. Selling cars in Albuquerque. Oh, I love the idea of it. I love the idea. Just me, sand as far as I can see. Having fucking wetbacks, kicking the fucking tires. Buying a $600 car for $6,000. I love it. I'm out there fresh. I'll be one of those guys who just starts wearing a fucking cowboy hat. 24 hours a day. I can start and sell bracelets too out there. I don't know what it is about bracelets when you get out west, but... uh, There's a market. There's a market for roadside jewelry that we just don't have in the East. Because if you live in New York, Philadelphia, Boston, you're uh, not fucking driving down the road going, I can use a big turquoise belt right now. Yet when you're out West, it's there for you. Selling cars in Albuquerque. I love the idea. I love the idea. Maybe it's time for a fresh start for Ronnie B. And that means getting out of this radio business. This was supposed to be a big party day. O and A, we're going to stay over. We were going to kick this off with a... We're doing Fez's uh, Run Silent, uh, Run Deep, seven-day trip. He's been doing a bang-up job. He hasn't moved or said a word for seven days. He's sitting across from me now. You would never know it. Fez is sitting across from me now. But well, next time he hears from me, it's going to be a big postcard from Albuquerque. Albuquerque. And then I'll just have, like, uh, my postcards are just going to have fucking, uh, like, uh, 69 Malibus. I am only going to sell 69 Malibus. I won't sell anything else. And I will convince you that you need one. I need a fresh start. Something new. Here's uh, Rick. Rick, you're in Fez. Hey, Ronnie, you need to come down here to Juarez, Mexico, man. First of all, you can't beat it. I love the idea. Ronnie B. living in Juarez, Mexico, the way I always thought I was going to end up, just on the other side of the border. You know, there's a there's a there's a big drug war going on, but hell, you know, you get you get really really good quality, really good quantity of cocaine, really cheap. You know. I could just see me standing out some fu- inside of some trucker's titty bar. Tiny pussy, large pussy, any exactly. kind of pussy you need. Come on down, man. Party's waiting for you. I am ready this, to start. You are the captain. You know what? If I don't go to New Mexico, I'm going to head on down to Juarez, Mexico. Early one morning, I was taking my rounds. I took a shot of cocaine, and I shot my baby down. It's time for a fresh start. I'm done with all this stuff. I don't need to come into work and see all this shit day after day. Here's uh, Dan. Dan, you're on a fez. Yeah, Ronnie, this got the perfect job for you, man. Yeah. Uh, you remember Guy Fieri was in the studio not too long back, and he's got that gig on Food Network doing diners, drivers, and dives. You'd be perfect for that, man. You know, I was talking to a very good friend of mine. I got an idea. I don't want to give the fuck title away. Let's just involve, say it involves 50 states. That involves 50 stakes. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, if I'm not happy down there in Juarez... Selling pussies to the truckers and bikers. Maybe that's what I need to do. Travel around the country. Maybe I'll end up down there in Juarez with some fucking maging flea bitten dog. I'll get a couple of guns from Matt. Just have them hanging off me everywhere. 
Uh, Rich, Rich, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron, I thought I'd offer a little silver lining. At least Fez didn't break the bit. Fez has done phenomenal. Fez's ability to do nothing is stunning. <laughs> it's absolutely one of the most phenomenal things I've ever seen in my life. Here is uh, Josh. Josh, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, uh, why don't you go back up to Canada? Didn't you have a, you know, things go really good for you last time you were up there? I had a little bad ending, and I had to get out of town quick, and I never really took the time to make sure that they understand that I didn't stay around for a certain appointment. Now, but from what I understand, that same thing that I didn't want to turn around and talk about is somewhat legal now. So perhaps time has been forgotten. But I'm, uh, I've always been of the school of thought that if you could uh, get away from talking to a judge, you ought to do it. You, you should do it. Uh, here's uh, Ted. Ted, you're on the Ron Fest show. Hey, uh, Ronnie, once you're heading out the door, yeah. I'd love to help you clean out the big-ass prize closet. What are, you in the, what are you in the mood for today, Ted? What do you got there, Ron? Uh, I know we got a lot of uh, movies. Uh, so I'll send you in and let you help yourself. There's all different kind of movies, including Gap, the Polo movie. And you can go, I think, GapTheMovie.com to uh, check that out. Um, here is uh, Smith. Smith, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, uh, Ronnie, when you move to Mexico, you need to go back to the, your old nickname, Tex. See ya! Jeez, I don't know. I can't understand why that's still following me. I'll just uh, retell the story uh, slightly if I can. My dad, for some reason when I was a little kid, I was uh, a little bit obsessed with uh, cowboy movies. And I had to be uh, like three or four where you're still dressing up in costumes. So my dad would start tell calling me Tex. And then I went out to play with my friends in the new neighborhood. And they go, what's your name? And I said, Tex. And then later my mom said, oh, dude, your name's not Tex. That's just something your dad's been calling you. So I had to go uh, back out the next day and say to people, hey, uh, this Tex thing, apparently it's uh, just been a miscommunication. Name's Ronnie B. Sorry about that, everybody. So uh, we'll start fresh uh, all over. Here's um, here's Evan. Evan, you're on a Fez. Fez, we're missing you, buddy. Fez Ron. is sitting right here, and he, I I tell you this, and I'm not even making this up. I've never been closer to Fez than I am right now. And you know how I say maybe I want to go traveling around. You could be out there on the road, and you got your dog with you. If Fez doesn't come out of this and he stays silent, he could kind of be like my human version of like a uh, a friendly, loyal dog. And then I will just uh, put upon Fez any emotions or feelings. Like, I know, buddy, it's going to be me and you out here. I know it's raining, but later I'm going to stop somewhere and get us some food. Uh, here is uh, Shakedown. Shakedown, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, this is as good a time as any to join the uh, travelers, Ronnie. Just out there traveling around the country, trying to convince people they need some kind of roofing work done, and then uh, spray painting it and headed down the road with really no help to them. And I enjoy it. I got to get out there. I got to get this away. I got to get this off my shoulders. I can't be the kind of person who comes into work to see an ambulance out front because I can't trust my team when I'm not around. That can't be my life. Fuzzy, that can't be my life. I know you're writing something on there that says I, you agree with me. You don't have to. I'm going to look over at you, buddy, and go like this. I know, pal. You're just as upset as I am. And I'm gonna ring it. I'm gonna just rub the back of your neck, drop the hammer, and we head on to the next town, our next adventure. I love the beard. If I can get you walking on all fours, it'll be fucking perfect. How old are you in dog years? I I wonder, Fez. I'll just call you Man Dog. I'll just walk into a bar somewhere, order a beer and a tequila for myself, and I'll go like this. I had a bowl of water from a man dog. If you got a can of anything back there, he eats it straight out of the can. 
Because I had a fucking dog named Buddy who's a Chesapeake a Bay Retriever that you would just open the fucking can and stand there and he would just eat it out. <laughs> and then sometimes he would take it and uh, put it in his mouth and shake it back like it was Popeye with spinach. I haven't loved a dog since, Fezzy, but maybe Man Dog. Maybe Man Dog is the best friend I've always been looking for. Maybe I'll talk to Bri Bri about getting out there as a trucker. Just me and Man Dog. It could be like that. Uh, remember the guy used to drive around with the monkey? It, 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 it was like BJ and the Bear was the name of it. This could be Ronnie B and the Man Dog. Uh, here's um, here's Sam. Sam, you're on Fez. Ronnie, you yeah. become caddy for me on tour. I'm a professional golfer. Professional golfer, huh? Yeah. You know what I think you ought to do, use here? Hmm. Three three wood? No matter <laughs> what's happening, I'm just going to hand you the three wood. You know, that works. I had a caddy one time where all I played with for nine holes was a three wood. Yeah. So that's perfect. I'll tell you something. Else. I'm going to be the only caddy that's driving a caddy instead of a fucking uh, golf cart. And you will just see a fucking caddy coming down the middle. That works for me. And it, there's lots of hot women that like hot women. Well, I'm going to, you know, I know when you say they go deep bush, butch, I'm sure it is hot to you. But I'll just say good. No, not to me. But, God you know. bless both of you. Let me ask you this because I don't know all the rules. Would I be able to bring a man dog with me? Because I don't want my man dog uh, with me whether I'm in my truck, whether I'm out on the road, whether I'm on the course. It doesn't matter where I go. I got to have this uh, dog. And then occasionally, if he doesn't like someone, he'll growl. I'll explain to somebody how one time this man dog saved me from a coyote. There's uh, ever anytime you meet guys who travel and they keep a dog with them, they always claim that the dog was in a fight with a coyote. No other fucking animal. Tommy, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, what's up, Mister B? How about me and you? Uh, we start up a new comedy club there. What do you say? You know what? Here's one thing in my life. I don't like to look back, Tommy. I, I like. I like once something's in the rearview mirror, I like to keep it there. Like to put it. Behind me. Uh, Rick. Rick, you're a manifest. Hey, Ronnie B. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, well, since uh, the Illinois state legislature is going to impeach Governor Blagojevich, we're going to need a new governor out here in Illinois, so maybe you should come out here and run. The problem is I don't know if I'm crazy and corrupt enough to be in that state. Yeah, but you got Molly's cupcakes, and those things are fucking golden. You just can't give those things away for free. The beauty of this is I really could get the cupcake vote behind me. That cupcake right now may be the only thing in life I'm proud of. I might be, my cupcake and my mad dog are the only two things that I could feel like, hey, I've made a difference. Maybe I just go out there and start baking. Maybe I can make it as a baker. I can't go on like this. I can't show up to work. To see my executive producer being pushed to an, into a goddamn ambulance and to see uh, just an incredibly hungover and useless fucking team. A team that act like this is going to be so much fun. Now my old man dog, oh, I shouldn't even call him that. He's not official yet. My partner, he can't speak today. He's doing his thing. He's not talking. Um, here's, uh, Sergio. What do you got, buddy? Hey, buddy. What's up? Listen, uh, why don't you come down to Guatemala? Uh, they're always looking for gringos to sell some good putang down there. Well, you know, I don't want to go too far south. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, that Guatemala thing, I mean, at least in Mexico, if the shit hits the fan, I know how far I got to go to get out. If just in the back of your mind you say there's the border, I can deal with it. But I don't know if I want to be in so deep. And I'm telling you right now, I'm ready to end it at like Butch and Sundance anyway. I'm re I'd rather go out in a hail of bullets than slowly year after year uh, stuff like this. Fire! 
<laughs> it was a fucking strange uh, end to what was essentially a comedy. What was essentially a homoerotic uh, chick flick ends with the two uh, protagonists just being blown to bits by an entire army. Uh, David, David, you're on the Hey, Ronnie, sorry to hear about uh, all the situations going on here. But when things are looking down and, and, and life's giving you a bowl of shit soup, just remember one thing. You're not gay. Yeah, it could always uh, be worse. It could always be worse. I appreciate the sense that people want to help me start over. And I'll tell you something else. I don't have a problem with restarts. I enjoy them. I like the idea. New place, new gig, new friends, maybe even a new name. Maybe what I do, I get out on the road for a while. I meet a guy who seems like he's doing well. He's successful. He's had a good pass. I kill him, take all his ID, and start living that life. Maybe that's what I need to do. Find myself as a brain surgeon somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. A brain surgeon that seems like he's had a lot of failures. So just running through a bad patch. You hear a brain surgeon going like this. Wow, there's a lot of gunk in here, huh? <laughs> you want to finish? You want to finish this up for me? I'm not feeling well. And plus I have to make a, a phone call. Let me just watch you for a while, because I'm forgetting a lot of the brain cutting stuff that I used to do so much back east. Just look over there, and I've just, I've opened up the skull, and I see the brain. I just try to put a bunch of push pins in there. I think everything's going to be all right. Might be time to move on, kill somebody, and take over their life. Maybe that's what I need. Plus, I could be the first brain surgeon with a man dog just sitting next to him at all times. By the way, can I get a bowl of water from a man dog? He's hot. Yeah, I know. I keep a kerchief around his head. I like a dog with a kerchief around his neck because it looks like it just came from a concert. And by the way, I guarantee you this. There's never been a dog that has a kerchief around its uh, neck that hasn't gotten a fucking shotgun from some stoner because they think... He loves being high. Oh, I'm so annoyed today with my team. So fucking annoyed. Davey Mack, I'd send you home today, but you got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to go, buddy. Uh, here's... Uh, let me go to John. John, you're on a fuzz. Hey, Ronnie. I would always say that you could uh, look for a nice coaching gig with the Jets, but might just be as much conflict. You ever think about representing Crazed? Let me tell you something right now. If I was the coach in the National Football League, uh, there'd be no punting on my team. We'd go for it. Uh, there's no extra uh, no kickers at all because there's two things we do. We go for two, and we onside kick. I'm talking about the most aggressive team in the history of sports. <laughs> they refuse to put a fucking foot on the ball. They couldn't even call it football on my team. It would just be ball. Yeah, I'm sure there would be a couple of uh, bad starts for us. We might get off to 1-15, uh, 2-14, but we're going to fucking beat Detroit. Something else There's going to be constant laddering. Nobody on your way being tackled, throw the ball behind you. No matter what happens, I have trust in everybody else on this team that they can catch the ball and go with it. The offensive line is going to have to be ready to catch a lateral and start running their asses off. Because I'm telling you right now, boys, we ain't punting. Under zero circumstances do we punt. This team goes for it. And just that fucking chant of go for it, go for it. Might only be 15 people up there, but they're going to be hardcore. They're going to be like the they're going to like the fucking type of football we bring to North Jersey. Unfortunately right now the guy I had 
as my uh, wide receiver has got a concussion from smelling some ass spray and falling on a rug. What the fuck? What the fuck? Um, here's, um, oh, it's the Daily Leader. Hey, Leader. Yeah, that guy's like the Plaxico Burris, fucking up the whole team. What are you going to do? You know, basically, Earl is in sweatpants with a fucking handgun down his balls. And he fucking lets down everybody who considers him a friend. What are you going to do? Ron, I got this great new idea. I was just thinking about it. You got a silent partner. How about you start doing magic? It's a totally original idea. I think it'll work out great. Maybe we could do it at just like knockoff comedy clubs. Comedy clubs that aren't in the A or even B list. Because uh, personally, my biggest problem with magic, and I know a lot of people like to go to magic shows, I don't like the constant lying. I don't like the fucking fact that everything you say to us is a lie. That no one has disappeared. You didn't turn fucking water into flowers. There's there's no fucking animals that just uh, go from being a handkerchief into either being a bunny or a dove. You're a fucking liar. And in every other job, that would be a hindrance. And in magic, it's a good thing. If honesty meant anything in this country, we'd shoot every goddamn magician to death. They can't be trusted. Walker, Walker, you're going to run a fez. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, I'm just curious. Do you think that Earl slipped and fell on some cum that fell out of the fez's ass? I'm not going to listen to anybody talk about my man dog that way. Not going to do it. Here's Tony. Tony, you're on the run of fez show. Hey, Ronnie, why don't you just come down here with me? I moved out of New York down here to Asheville. It's beautiful down here. You can walk your man dog all over the place. Beautiful colors, weather. Come on down here, and we can open up a comic book store together. What do you? What kind of? What kind of work are you doing down there in Asheville? Ah, uh, jerking off. Yeah, just fucking around, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, you know. But hey, the beauty of some of these places that is, if you show up there with eight, nine hundred dollars, you can live for a couple years. They're like, oh, it's the guy with New York. He's fucking loaded. Oh, it's insane. It's just insane. Yeah, today was going to be a day. Oh, and hey, we're going to stay over. We're going to have a lot of fun. Fezzi is literally part of... Well, I think we're about 15 minutes away... From starting the one successful thing that he's ever done on the radio in many, many years. He is not talking. He's not saying a word. You can go to the... Uh, and he has not done it. Sheepy, you've been with him at all times. Yes. Not even cleared his throat. Never. You slept next to him last night. Pretty close to him. How close? Uh, we shared a chair once. Close enough to smell his balls? Yes. That's close. So today was going to be a celebration. I was walking up here, and I was literally uh, calling a friend of mine with a party su uh, supply store, and I was going to have the entire fucking ceiling just loaded with balloons and confetti that was all going to drop down on Fez and say, you've done it. You're the most, this is the successful gig that you've been looking for. You're a man who figured out how to be totally quiet on the radio. And you're getting paid for it. I mean, you talk about stealing money. I know GVAC calls me the bandit. But fucking Fez, at that point, has got to be smoky. <laughs> uh, here is, uh, let me head on over here to John. John, you're on the Run Fez show. Hey, what up, Ronnie? Yeah. I feel for you, man. Uh, I got a perfect job for you, though. Come over here to Illinois. All you got to do is drive a truck one day a week from Chicago to St. Louis. 50 large. You can take your man dog with you. Yeah, but what am I fucking dropping off, brother? 
Nah, no questions of what's in the truck. That's why I need a new driver. He got yeah. a little curious. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I know very much what it's like not to look in the gym bag. I'm very yeah. fucking familiar with that fucking position. I always got to take a gander. I'd have to go in the back of that truck and take a look inside. Well, here is uh, the People's Choice Award winner, Mr. Jay Moore. Hello, Jay. Hi, everybody. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, Ronnie B. Hi, Fed. He won't talk Hi, to you, Jay. He's running right. silent. Hi, Fez. Fez, I want a People's Choice Award. <laughs> Jay? Fez? If you have something to say to Fez, you go through Big A. Because as you know, Big A is Fez's replacement in your life. Big A! Big, Big A, A showed up to hang out with you at, uh, where you invited uh, Fez to. Yeah, Big A took uh, Fez's invite to Foxwoods, came backstage. We sold uh, 3,180 tickets. No advertising except for, you know, like the newspaper. It was, it was pretty... It was really exciting, Ronnie. Like, I, I thought I was going to be a mutt up there in the woods of Connecticut. Right. And I walked down into this beautiful theater. I got a funny anecdote I'd like to share with you. Go ahead. Uh, I was practicing David Caruso on stage during the sound check. Uh -huh. and, I, and I queued up that Who song at the beginning of CSI Miami. Basically, I'm just turning it into a boat act. Right. So... <laughs> The wait staff comes in and they're all like, you know, getting their assignments in this giant theater. And I'm going, well, Frank, that's what happens <laughs> when the driven get taken for a ride. And I'm just doing different David Carusoisms. And this waiter from like literally the 40th row goes, hey, Jay, don't forget to look at the floor and like look off to the side like that fucking cocksucker does when you do the impression. <laughs> I'm like, all right, uh, 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 how should I do walking? <laughs> They uh, they're somewhat familiar on the East Coast. People are, feel like eh, we're all in this together. I'm a waiter. You're the fucking headliner. Uh, it's a partnership. When my wife and I were first dating, we were walking down 55th Street, and there was there was industrial uh, garbage not garbage men, but the guys that like clear out buildings, <laughs> like big like we're tearing down the building garbage men. And these two meatheads are, like, emptying a dumpster. And the guy goes, oh, my God, Jay Moore is walking down the street with Nicky fucking Cox. How you doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fez. Nothing. He's not going to give up anything because, is he, Jay, is he at least, yeah. he's finally happy. Because he's not talking? He's not here. He's a ghost. He's He's just the breeze now. Is he listening to How to Disappear Completely by Radiohead? It almost is like Ooh. that's exactly where he is. He's he's much more translucent. He's fading away. He's mist-like. It's like a Stephen King novel. If, if you don't talk, you keep kind of disappearing a little. Now, this pe people Jay, this People's Choice Award, the network's got to be stoked for that, right? I would think so. Nobody from the network called me to say, hey, congratulations. You're so kidding me. No, but I don't care. The people thanked me. <laughs> what else do you want but the people? You and Coldplay are the people's choice. No, Coldplay lost to, uh, who did they lose to? I don't know. I didn't stay. I didn't Kid Rock you. or somebody. Well, Kid of course. You're not going to beat Kid Rock. Let's face it. It is 1999. No, you know no <laughs> he could have won Best Drama for all I cared. He's the people's champion. I, I hope Best fucking song went to bottom of a box because they haven't beat it yet. It's still the best fucking song. He's amazing. The people have spoken. Ronnie, don't forget when you do David Crew, yeah, look at the phone off to the side like that cocksucker does. <laughs> Actually, I mixed up my accent. Look Sorry at this. Like Jay really Moore walking down the street with Nicky fucking Cox. How you doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> he's got like he's got like a hazmat mask on and like big gloves. He's got like sheetrock dust all over the fucking street. <laughs> oh my god, Jay Moore is walking down the street with Nicky fucking Cox. How you doing, guys? You know, when, when I first got to um, New York, I walked into the fucking drugstore and Spike Lee was there uh, walking up at the same time. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I live in, you know, there's Spike Lee. And the guy says to him, there's a line here, Spike. Just fucking acting like he's a guy from the neighborhood. Like uh, Spike in real nice movies, but stand behind me. <laughs> All right, Jay. I wanted to thank all the people on RonFez.net that uh, voted. You guys really uh, 
They for, really rallied all the people on uh, Ron Fed. Forget it. So that's the people cross. You bring happiness to people, not only in this country, but all over the world. And don't listen to fucking ham and eggers like Sheepy, who decide uh, to run you down for not mentioning Blowhard from the podium. We're all proud of you, Jay. We're all I proud of you. Blowhard. They just turn off the mic too quick. I know. You were just about to say thanks to Blowhard <laughs> as the fucking music came up. Music came up, they played me off, and I'm like, Ronnie B. Oh, <laughs> oh too bad, too you bad. Were right after, you were right after Jim Rome and Kevin and Bean. Sure, why? Why? Well, I know one of the biggest night of your life. What you want to start thinking about is radio friends. <laughs> Ron, I can assure you that was not the biggest night of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Well, I like to pretend that you won an Oscar. Oh, me too. Why? How do you think I sat for two hours? Yeah. All right, God bless. Hey, Fez. Just say goodbye oh, to Fez. Fez, last time I was on the phone with you, you were crying about a secret and a trip, and you had a hose in your butt in the front yard. And By the way, Jay. Uh, what was the secret? He shared nothing down south. Nothing. Wow, Fez. Remember what hey, Harvey Fez. Milk said, everybody who isn't helping is hurting. Hey, Tappy. <laughs> I Listen, forget. this is John Ferguson Cox Moore. I'm talking to you, Fez. Yeah, what is that about? Why did you take your chick's name on, Jay? Well, she took my name on. We just have the same names now. But what's the what's the necessity of that? People are under the impression it's like she did not take my name and I took her name. Yeah. But she's Nicole Avery Cox Moore and I'm John Ferguson Cox Moore. I guess the thing is that it, it's weirding people out more that you took the chick's name. Did I think didn't John Lennon do that? Yeah. So yeah. What what a homo. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you ripped hey, off Fez. you ripped off a dead Brit. Hey Fez. Just answer him, Fezzy. Fez. You know, this is going to do wonders for our relationship, Fez. This is great. She writes that Harvey Dent. Fucking what ball What does he buster. win if he wins the bet? Nothing. Now, well, you know, you're not going to get anything from me. It's a fucking crooked game with Ronnie B. I don't know why anybody <laughs> doesn't catch on to that. All right. I'll bless uh, you guys. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. There he is. People's Choice Award winner. I'm right now considered uh, when people get together and they go, who's our choice? Jay Moore. Jay Moore is their choice of all the people in the United States. They voted. Here's the two things they picked. Uh, Jay Moore, Barack Obama. <laughs> That's the two choices they made this year. Um, the other choice they made was the Whopper <laughs> over uh, the Big Mac. And that was people that never ate before. <laughs> they went to starving people and said, what tastes better to you? Now, people have never had a fucking hamburger, and you're going to give them a Whopper and a Big Mac? Imagine the shits that took place in these third world communities. They must have felt like they were gut shot. Um, here's uh, Bob. Bob, you're on the Ron Fez Show. <laughs> hey, Ronnie B. Yeah. You get tired of raising Kansas City Chiefs need a new general manager. They got rid of Carl Peterson, and uh, you could probably bring Man Dog with you. You know they they don't have mascot. Bob, here's the problem. I wanted something I can succeed at. Right now, the only job I really like that I've been offered is fucking selling cars to Mexicans and Indians out in New Mexico. I'm just gonna be running down the road trying to loosen my load. Uh, ben, Ben, you're on the Run of Fez show. B, listen, I listen. All right, I'm feeling for you. I'm going to say this: you sound like a million bucks. All right, first off. Second off, I'm going to try to make a sell to you, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh, All right. At, at, at first, it sounds ridiculous, but listen, this is what we got: bone sausage. All right, it's a huge football town. We got the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Friday fish fries. Are you kidding me? Who's got that? I can't and, uh, live that. I can't live that far away from black people. I gotta have well, some. Bla I gotta be able to complain at all times. I have to be able to say, uh, you know, I, I gotta. I can't just be a constant on the Lily White thing. Speaking of Lily, she's picked the angle. Go up there in the Great Lakes. Just bang around up there on the Great Lakes. Lily is not only uh, co-hosting. Uh, a big radio show up in up there in Rochester with Brother Weez. But also on the weekends, uh, she's working the docks. So that's the life for me. 
uh, all these uh, ships come up and Lily's out there standing in line with the other men. Somebody gets picked and you're out there with a hook and you're just bringing bales off the dock. And it's a good romantic uh, time. And I think she's doing a little boxing, too. <laughs> you should have looked out for me, Brother Weiss. You should have looked out for me. Not my night. You were my brother Weez. You were my brother Weez. You should have looked out for me. I don't think anyone got that joke, but it was actually to put that together <laughs> as an improv, and it turns out to be not my brother. You know, you were my brother Weez. Not my night. <laughs> I wish Jay was still here to have him use that the next time he goes to Foxwoods. I like Jay says, no advertising at all except for the paper. That's fucking advertising, Jay. <laughs> That's what advertising is. Uh oh, here's my good friend uh Redding. Redding, how are you, pal? I'm doing good, buddy. How you doing? Good. Good. Hey, uh, so no matter what you do, I know you're gonna be gangbusters, whatever you do, but I just want to let you know that you've always got a home in the city of champions. Oh, it's all happening. Philadelphia, of course, just on a rampage. They won the big arena bowl with the Philadelphia Soul. World Series uh, with the Philadelphia Phillies. And now the Iggs, the IGSs, are coming into North Jersey. They're playing the North Jersey Giants. And everybody in North Jersey is petrified right now. The domination. You should have looked out for me just a little bit. You were my brother Weiss. Just a little bit. Uh, here's um, here's Dirty Dave. Dirty Dave, you're on the Ronnie Fest show. Hey, Ron. I don't want to bring the show down, um, but I've been um, driving up down the highway for about an hour. And um, like Fez, I've got my own treat I picked out. I'm thinking about going right into it. Ending it at all. Kind of depressed. I what? think um, Fez might be able to talk me out of it, but I don't. I don't know if that's possible. Is he there? Here's. Uh, uh, I'll give some people some backstory on this. Fez says at one time in his life he was so depressed and anxious. I don't know how you can be both, but he's figured out a way. And he had picked out a tree for himself that he had planned on driving into and hurting himself, so he could just be slapped into a hospital room. And I have done that. I've picked out my own tree. I call that tree the Run and Fez show. And I took my life, I got into a car, and I drove into the tree called the Run and Fez show. And this is where I am right now. The damage that I've done, I've done to myself. I've done it to myself. Of course I got nobody that, 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 from my back. I didn't go around and pick people to do that. Of course I got nobody who cares. Of course I'm going to go walking up in the work on a Friday and see a fucking ambulance outside and seeing them wheel an Earl into it and then take the elevator up and see all the bosses in here questioning people like it was a fucking CSI episode. And there's just, uh, there's just fucking bejeebie tape down on the fucking floor where apparently he... Uh, he went down and rolled his fucking eyes back. Of course. Has anybody from our team fucking went over there to sit with Earl? No. That would be watching our own backs. That would be watching Ronnie B's backs. We don't need to do that. Steve. Steve, you're on Ronnie Fez. What up, Ronnie B? What you got for me, my man? I will uh, offer you my lead manager job at my tank farm here in Arizona. How's that feel? We got pretty girls all day. And what would I be doing there? Getting people tanned? You'd be my manager at the tank farm. You'd do whatever you want. I'll be Run like this. Lotion off the back. Let me, t sir, what kind of tan would you like? Would you like a deep, dark tan? Please lay in here. By the way, uh, put these goggles on. You're going to need those. Get in your underwear and climb right in this tanning. We'll come in and get you after 20 minutes. 
I could do it. I could do this. The tan man, Ronnie B. And I've been there all the time. And wherever I'm going out there, people are going like this. Hey, Ronnie B, nice tan. You're looking like chocolate, my brother. You're looking like chocolate. What is it about white people? They despise black people, but can't wait to get browner. Hate Mexicans, love to get brown. Maybe the idea is to have some kind of lightning place for black people that they could go in the summer. So that as white people are getting darker, uh, black people get lighter, and we meet somehow in some futuristic uh, one-tone place. Because this fucking Tommy Toon Tone thing that we're doing right now, we can't go on like this. Here's my good friend, uh, Paulo. How are you, Paul? Hi, Ron. How you doing? Good. Hi, Fez. How you doing? Hey, Fez, Fe- Fez you can doing? only write to you. Shit. Fucking what the hell. Look, all I call is just to support you. I wish you had some people out there who could do some shit without getting into trouble. I don't know. Paul, how many times did you go to the fucking hospital on me? Never. Yes, you did. They fucking put you in that time that you got drunk and rubbed shit all over the fucking building. And then the cops, uh, they did one of those. uh, Okay, but I didn't ask to go. Right, but they grabbed you and they decided you were clinically insane. Yeah, but I never. And then remember the time I kicked you in the balls and uh, your balls got big? Yeah, but okay, I didn't go that time, did I? Yeah, you did. You had to. Uh, you actually went in the hospital and stayed for a couple of days, I think. All right. I remember the time I threw up in the limo. That was a big deal. And then I had to go in for a day. And there's a few other times. But, I mean, in the old days, did anybody ever used to give us a hard time? A little, no, they didn't. But what are you getting? I am Hey, I hear you on the radio. Oh, Paul, I hear you on the radio. Uh, oh. Paul, uh, Razzie Awards are when? Razzie Awards, I, the, everything comes, uh, the important thing is this weekend is the Golden Globes. They are, the, the Golden Globes are this weekend. Right. I didn't know that. The Golden Globes are this weekend. And, you know, look, let's face it, I'm, I'm kind of, today is that day when everything's gone to shit and my, you know, I'm trying to, because I wanted to change my life and make a movie and, be, you know, become, now I, I, I'm trying to hang on to the dream of just caring about movies again. Paulo. Yeah. Would you like to come work in the tanning industry with uh, me? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. I got. I got a new girlfriend. I gotta. Go, I gotta take the call. All this right. Is my new girlfriend. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Boy, he's constantly pussy whipped. <laughs> he is pussy whipped by insanos. You know what I'm thinking about doing too. This is a business I've had my mind on for a while. Is you know how women like stuffed animals? I'm thinking stuffed man dogs. It looks like a man. It looks like... Because uh, uh, women like to sleep with a stuffed animal. It makes them feel comfortable. It makes them feel nice. Give them a stuffed man dog. And it's to the best of a stuffed animal and the best of a dog. There's got to be a market in that. There's got to be market. And Paul's called back already. Paul, I missed you I, while you were gone. I'm sorry. I, I really am in a, bu- a really, really, really good relationship. I could not just, you know, blow her off. I had to go well, tell her. This where's this one from, Paul? This is brand new. I was dating a few people, and I liked them, but it wasn't happening, and I just dropped them all. Is she a local girl? Yes. She's a Plant City girl. Now, what's her <laughs> Plant City girl, which would be the greatest fucking punk song of all time? <laughs> Just Plant City girl. What? What's her uh, insanity? What? What is? Why is she a fucking she lunatic? Loves me more than anyone has. I mean, she is the most sweet, loving person I have ever even heard of. What's she look like? It's, it, 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 look, I'm keeping her away from the show. There's no question. I get, I get it. I'm just curious what she looks like. She's my age. She's wow. Sort of like, and she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but she's we're like having incredible sex. Everything's just great, great, great about it. She has this incredible daughter, great family. Everything's so perfect. Now, if I could straighten my motherfucking useless, yeah. pathetic, life. I'll tell you this, yeah. Paul, because yeah. she sounds 
uh, beautiful. She sounds precious, and I believe in this. Honor that, my friend. I will. You Every want, day is precious here, to me. Here's what you can do. If you find something beautiful in the world, right. all right, right, treasure it. Treat it like we would a national park. Don't trample on the grass. Right. Take a stand back. See the beauty that is her. And I'll tell you what. I'm willing to do this, Paul, and I've never said this to you before. What do you say, me and you double team her? Just the fucking <laughs> three of us just banging the shit out. I wouldn't even mind if uh, we do one of those vagina and ass things that we're that close <laughs> that we have to lean back from each other so our balls don't listen, touch. Listen, listen. I, I, there's no question that my, uh, my personal life has been way too much on this show and that this woman needs to be protected. She, yes, I, the, I agree. Get, okay. She wants to get involved in the crazy world. And I said, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Stay away from it. Stay away from my fucking crazy life. And Protect beauty. I feel bad now because she's, lo- she's in love with someone who, and I'm afraid. I'm afraid because I have to change. I can't go on. I have to, I have to pull out of this. I got to make, somehow make this movie a success. And, you know, and, and that's and, not going to happen. None of your dreams are going to come true. Why is that? I why? don't. I, I think it's because you lack talent and drive. No, Paul. it's not that I, I lack the drive. And OK, look, the whole thing with Gap, it was supposed to be a small movie. We did it in three days and then got all kinds of drama and crazy things. We got cursed. People were dying. All kinds of things. Horrible things happened. But finally, it's out. And I want to move on. So, I mean, you know, Paul, you I, know what? Here's the deal, though. You have found something that makes you happy. Yes, but every day, I mean, how much longer is this going to last? Who I cares? Can't... It's right now, this moment. If a woman can look at you and take your breath away, even for that moment, then live your life with a little bit of reverence and say, I can't believe in the world that I live in today and all the bad things that there are in the world that a woman can look at me and just make me melt. Well, you're a winner, my friend. Uh, I you're a am. Big winner I today. am. I swear to God. I swear to God. But I mean, I know that, 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 that the fucking world is falling a fucking apart. So and, what? I, You've got a moment. <sighs> Cherish that moment. Yeah. Well, actually, that would be good if I could just die sometime, you know, maybe just, you know, in the perfect moment that would be it then you go on to the next life right doesn't doesn't that isn't that how it works who cares about the next life I, just I, have this moment for yourself this is eternity all right all right yeah. live eternity in a glance my friend well, in that glance let that be your eternity yeah well, all right i mean i think of eternity in any case the point is is that I, i'm 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 commiserating with you guys I remember the days when when every day seemed like forever. Like, we didn't care. We didn't care. We did every kind of crazy motherfucking thing. And, you know, and I, I feel, you know, I've been thinking about doing something again. Because, I, I mean, I always let Dave, for the last few years, enjoy the limelight where he just did all kinds of crazy shit. And I, and I was happy for it because I said, thankfully, I'm out of it. But now I'm thinking maybe I should come back and do one more really insane thing. We don't want you here, Paul. We don't want you here, don't it? <laughs> That ain't going to happen. They can't, they can't, with the corporate thing now, you can't do it anymore. You can't do anything anymore. People don't know how to look at Earl and see him as Earl. They make a big deal out of it. Like this fucking guy wouldn't rather... And I, everybody has worked with this guy before, especially if you ever worked in a factory. There was a guy who would rather spend the day at the emergency ward than he would at work. Now, I want to tell you something. The work that we do here... Is like basically being at an open bar, fucking uh, for a job. It should be a happy, exciting, fun thing. They've turned it into something uh, ugly. Uh, here's um, here's uh, Ryan. Ryan, you're on the Run of Fest show. Yeah, Ryan, I want to invite you to come out to the Badlands and we can run around like madmen and fleece tourists. Ronnie, be in the Badlands. Bad. I don't think it'd be too bad a time for you. You know, I've been to the Badlands twice in my life. Once, just the edge of it to look it over. And two, during a Springsteen song. That's my only two times that I've been there in the Badlands. Now, what do you do for money there in the Badlands? Uh, well, out of work carpenter. 
Because right now, I think if I'm going to live out there, if anything, I just want to hold up covered wagons. I just want to shoot people in covered wagons. Out in the Badlands. I'll tell you right now. In the history of the United States, no one was crazier than the fucking people in the covered wagons. Basically, thinking about this. They were driving through the Indian nations, right? Invading, more or less. They're, they're invading someone else's country. And do they have cannons with them? Do they have rifles? No. They have a covered wagon with pots and pans, and you're taking your chick. And then you're fucking surprised that your fucking uh, fat pioneer chick ends up with a goddamn arrow in her back <laughs> while she's shooting as the Indian. You're in somebody else's country. Could you imagine if we went in to Iraq with fucking pots and pans and acting like, hey, we live here now. <laughs> Maybe the Badlands is where I need to live. To return to the PJs. It's a good day. There's some things that work. Justin, you're in front of us. Ronnie B., what's up, man? Hey. Hey, I just want to let you know, you've got a standing invitation out here. We're at the base of the Sierras on the cow ranch. I'm standing right here with my dog watching our cowboys bring cows in. The guys still know how to work hard, even if they do party hard. None of that other bullshit. Uh, where exactly is this ranch? We're, we're in California at the base of the Sierras. Ronnie B. living at the base of the Sierras, working the land. You hear, yeah, you hear that? You hear the cows in the background? Sure. You know what? I've always believed that you can't own the land until you work it. That's, <laughs> That's just true. been my belief. Now, the problem is I'm kind of lazy. Is there a position, somebody who just sits around and makes the cowboys laugh? It's <laughs> yeah, um, called the owner. Yeah. Maybe I could have a job where... When the Cowboys come in from a rough day, someone gives them an amusing look at the current events. <laughs> if there's any kind of Cowboy position where you kind of do a point-counterpoint with the events of the day, that's what I would be up for. And I think I need Spurs. I need Spurs to jingle, jangle, jingle. I'll have Spurs on the back of some New Balance. <laughs> I could maybe be Cookie, that fucking guy that just, uh, they call him Cookie. Why? Because he cooks. <laughs> I I wonder how many times, like, if you're a cook named Cookie, you're saying to people, um, no, that was a different Cookie. That wasn't me. That was a different guy named Cookie. Because I guess uh, cowboys aren't the best at com coming up at uh, nicknames. Because every cook gets the same fucking nickname. Cookie. Looks like I'm starting a new life for myself because my boys drive me fucking apeshit wild. Earl pulled a stunt today that just... I feel like going over to the emergency ward and just breaking his fucking ankle so he has a reason to be there. And I leave my house today with everything well in the world. And I mean, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a job that you can walk to work, that's a great job. I walk through the streets of Manhattan to work. It's fantastic. And I don't take that lightly. I realize that I have a great gig and I have a lot of fun. And I try to tell that to the people that I work with. And they cannot seem to grasp it. They just want to make things worse. And there's no way away on this with Earl. Maybe if I get out there on the open range. Maybe that's where I need to be. The base of the Sierras. Caught up in some kind of broke back mountain situation. <laughs> just me and some other guy up in the mountains one fucking night. I suck on my fingers and send them up his ass. It's a whole new life. I don't know how it works. I'm ready to do something. Ready for a new start. I don't need this. 
And I swear to God, I, I honestly, and I've never said this before, I want to apologize to ONA. I literally want to say to ONA, I'm sorry that fucking uh, Earl acted like a nut with you guys today. And everybody's caught up in this. It's ridiculous. Austin, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, Ron, uh, I'm down here in Mississippi. I'm down here in Mississippi, and uh, you come down here and be a riverboat captain. You go up and down the river, no, no worries, no problems. Riverboat captain. The only thing right. I got to worry about is some sand. Sand no in places in the river that it isn't supposed to be. Uh, we can go between New Orleans and Memphis. Just hang out. Then at night, I could go out and dress all in white and tell my stories at different yeah. places along the Mississippi River. Earl can't swim, so he can't come. One might have a man dog with me. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, Ronnie B., the riverboat captain. I got no problems with a new start. And don't act like I never slept on the floor before. I have. Nothing fucking bothers me. I've been uptown. I've been downtown. I've dined with kings and queens. And I've eaten pork and beans. Soared with the eagles, uh, slithered with the snakes. And it's all the fucking same to Ronnie B. I don't care one way or the other. You want to do fucking Peruvian Coke, or you want to sit here and huff gasoline out of an old sock. I'll fucking go either way. Well, we're going to be partying. Mark, Mark, you're on the Ron and Fez show. How's Paul Opo in town? You got sheepy over there sitting in a bucket trying to suck his own dick. No, how's that helping? How the hell is that helping? Here's uh, Raven. Raven, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, um, Sheepy, what does Fez's cum taste like? L let me tell you something, Raven. You are not so Raven. I'm going to say that to you, and that could be the new TV show. You're not Raven. You are not so Raven. And Sheepy, let me guess. Tangy? Like hummus. Hummus? Hummus. <laughs> you ought to do a play, Sheepy. The Iceman Cometh <laughs> in My Face. <laughs> that could be like, seriously, we could make a porn for the Broadway uh, fucking crowd. Because they don't get their own. You know how everybody always tries to turn fucking TV shows into it? But um, no one ever does that. We could do the fisting of a salesman. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the dick of a salesman. <laughs> Glenn Gary, Glenn Cunt is coming soon. <laughs> and then people are going to be like this. It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't know what it is about uh, a lot of those literary types. But if they have something to say... They have to take their glasses off as if this is way too serious for my glasses. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something so serious that I have to be blurry when I when I state it. And I'm not. I, this is the one thing I don't understand about God. You can't make eyes that last a fucking lifetime. <laughs> you can't come up with two eyes that fucking work. From the beginning to the end? How's that help? I wonder what fucking, uh, like, they used to do, like cavemen. They probably, you didn't know that you couldn't see well if you were a caveman. As AJ Dynamite has stopped in. Oh, the stars are out. The stars are out. Mongo, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. You need to take the Church of Bennington on the road and your big finishing act, act you could uh, heal all the mutes. Hi, Fez. You know, uh, Mongo, let me tell you something. I've been thinking about going out there on the road as a preacher. It's something that would be a lot of fun. I like to see myself doing tent shows. But I am not and will never be into organized religion. But I could find myself into some kind of disorganized spirituality. Just really uh, 
a potpourri of fucking strange things that you could grab onto. But then I would have to finally see if my own flock could be saved. I would like just to see the Church of Coolness. I would like to see my own guys be able to say, here is some philosophy for myself. Here's some spirituality of myself. I've picked up on it. But if I don't even see the fucking people closest to me with any happiness, I see them struggle day after day. I'm ready to say, are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a miracle? (laughs) And I will travel town to town with you. And we will take the money off the believing hayseeds. (laughs) Jesus loves you, but you got to show him some faith. You got to open that wallet and take the last of your money and hand it over. So he knows you mean it. Here's my good friend, Arch. Arch, you're on the Ron Fez show, buddy. Hi there, my friend. How you feeling? I'm dealing. All right, my friend. Uh, I got to tell you, you're forgetting uh, you can fall back in that author career. You got two great sold-out books. Well, I don't know of any other author who had two books completely sell out first time that they came out. I don't think it's ever happened before. The first edition of Ron Bennington's Line of the Day sold out. <laughs> Second edition sold out immediately. And now there's some talks about a movie. Yes. And it'll just be one film that'll be only be shown on uh, an iTouch. <laughs> and then it will be disappear. And an uh, award-winning film that'll be. Yeah, it'll be award-winning, but only for one person. Almost like a peep show, where only one person <laughs> can watch it at a time. A little quarter slot. Not a bad idea. Yeah. You're the best, Arch. Yeah. Ron and Fez show. By the way, Fezzi has been silent. He's been deep for the last 24 hours. Uh, he has held this thing together. And what a job he has done. What a job he's done. Proud of him. Joe, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. How's it going? Good. I got a job for you out here. I got 30,000 acres of land. Nothing to do but go around and chase college women, and there's plenty of illegals to uh, bring over some of the, uh, a little bit of that white powder. Back into the blow business, huh? Ah, it's around. I'm not in the business, but it's easy to find. You know, how many acres do you have? 30,000. Why so many acres? Why do you need... What Did you at one time at 18,000 acres and go, this isn't enough? I need more <laughs> Never acres. Enough. Never enough. All right. My idea is this, and it never really comes up before. I'm looking to sell that kind of acreage, but under the sea. Why? You know, they're selling things on the moon. Why can't you sell 30,000, 40,000 acres to people, but under the, uh, under the sea? It's big enough that everybody could have a lot of room. Hey, I'd like to do this experiment. And I say that because I'm just thinking about it this second. But what if we took everybody on the planet Earth and we said we're going to have them stand shoulder to shoulder? How much room would we need? Let's suppose it was almost like a mosh pit type situation. Do you think that we could put everybody in the Earth into the United States? I think we could easily do it. I'm going to need a mathematician or mathematician, as I like to call the smart kids, to make them feel like they're part of something. But I honestly think, not only do I think that we could do that in the United States, I think we could probably do it in about half the United States. If even. Maybe we only need a few states. I'm talking about everybody just standing there, just shoulder to shoulder. First of all, the logistics are going to be amazing of how we're going to get everybody there. And then, of course, if someone has to take a piss and you're really about four or five (laughs) states away from a bathroom. How many people are on the fucking planet? How much square footage? And how much square footage are we talking about? Are you talking... Two square feet you think anybody needs? We could even give them three, but I like two because I want you to bump up against other people. (laughs) So we need this. We need to... There's a math uh, problem there. I love to figure it out. 
And then I honestly want us to do this once just so we can make history. This was the civilization who decided to stand together in a big crowd. And I honestly think if I get a fucking crowd that big, I'm fairly sure I can get the Jay Giles band to play it. (laughs) I can get them to regroup and they're not going to play the dumb 80s shit. They're going to play that 70s boogie stuff. That's just perfect. Uh, Here is... uh, and I think we're going to need a, a, a couple states best. <laughs> a couple states. Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on the Running Fez show. Hey, man, how's it going? Good. Hey, uh, I had a jackass friend of mine who's complaining about overpopulating, so I went to an almanac about a year ago, and you take the total number of people on the planet, you can put them four to a house. If each house is on a lot, no bigger than 4,000 square feet, they can all fit in the state of Texas. Now, you wouldn't have any roads or hospitals or anything, but it just goes to show you they can all fit in the state of Texas. We're not overpopulated at all. Well, all you got to do is get outside of any city, and you see a lot of Rome. Now, the problem is, when you get out there, who the fuck wants to live there? Because they got news for you. I go an hour in any direction, and I might as well be... And fucking hayseed town. I don't fucking want it. Uh, here is uh, Cody. Cody, you're on the Running Fez show. Hey, guys. Well, I guess just you. Um, my German teacher had a conversation with us once about overpopulation. That's what he said. And he said that you can put everybody in the state of Indiana that lives in the world, and they'll have 16 square feet to themselves to live comfortably, no overpopulation. Now that one I'm not believing. I, I, German teacher told me... Uh, you know why there's no German teacher? I mean, there's no overpopulation? The Germans. This fucking, <laughs> this plant would be filled with Jews if they didn't get a, an idea in their head. He's a good guy. But I guarantee you we can put everybody uh, together like that. I guarantee you... It would not be a problem. Now, I don't know what we're going to do when we get all together. That's the problem. Uh, here is um, Ernest. Ernest, you're on the Run of Fez show. How you doing, buddies? Yeah. I was wondering, uh, how many uh, beach balls do you think we need for this, Ronnie B? We're going to need a lot of beach balls. <laughs> and I haven't called them yet, but I'm hoping I can get Voss MC. So Voss, if Voss MCs and tells everybody there's going to be a lot of great acts coming out later, we know it's a little uncomfortable. And we're also going to need to spray those people with water like you have to do at Woodstock. <laughs> but I don't know whether any of you guys have uh, been up to uh, Woodstock, but um, that area that they had half a million people in is fucking nothing. It's not a huge thing at all. It's just this little tiny uh, glen. I think you would use the word glen for this. It's just this little tiny area, and they put half a million people in there. And in my situation, we're also going to be using uh, backstage. There will be a backstage area. And I'm not wasting any. By the way, uh, we're selling water so expensively. It's going to be like $17 for a water. Um. Here's uh, Tom. Tom, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Hey, uh, I was watching a 2020 special. They're saying that you can take the whole population of the world, stick it in Texas. It'll be less dense than New York City. All right, so here's the beauty of this. What if we do this as a planet? We all get together, and we say we're all going to live in Texas. And then we'll have the rest of it for vacation land. (laughs) I think it would be nice for everyone. Where you could show up to Australia on a vacation and nobody's there. (laughs) I'm ready. I got to get out of this business. I came in here this morning. I wanted to have a nice day. Fez refuses to talk to me. Uh, Davey Mack, hungover and crazy. Hicks, hungover and crazy. There's not... uh, Anything I could say from about what Earl did today to the ONA show. The fucking 
bucket of shit that he put those fellas in for no apparent reason. Someone sprays him, so he has to fall down and act like he's fainted again. Have EMTs called? I can't tell you the embarrassment factor I would be in if I did that to my friends today. And I had to come walking in here and say to the bosses from Sirius, who, let's face it, just barely know me. Uh, I've seen him do this 15 times in my life. I've seen him lose in basketball games and act like his pancreas has fallen out. How do you fucking... And this is how nuts I am. I'm walking in and immediately to two guys that I barely know, who, let's face it, are worried about their own ass, I have now uh, have created the metaphor of uh, fainting goats. <laughs> and I'm telling them that the fainting goat in a time of nervousness and fear will faint and fall down and Earl has uh, taken that on for themselves and they're looking at me two fucking corporate guys because I immediately I try to take them away from ONA and Jimmy because I you know ONA and Jimmy have been involved in things before and I don't want to stick into them and now I may have to come up with the fainting goat theory the two guys that I'm going to tell you the truth I don't think know an awful lot about animals And we've heard nothing uh, back from him, huh? Have we heard anything from Sam? Uh, Sam is saying I told uh, he got all his tests done. I said rush back here. Um, he's f he's fine. The doctors diagnosed him as fine. And I is, said, is Earl on his way? I said you better get back here as soon as possible. I'll personally pay for the cab, but get in the cab and get back here now. Uh, here is uh, Bill. Way to give it away, then. Bill, Bill, you're on the Run of Fez show. Let me try it again, brother. Bill, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, I think I got the answer for you. Yeah. You got six billion people in the in the world. Mm -hmm. Each person taking up one square foot, six billion square feet, divided by 5,280 uh, squared, gives you about 215,000 square miles, about the size of Texas. All right, so if the people of the world will please just listen to me. We can all get in the Guinness Book of World Records with the world's biggest mosh pit, which would be everybody in the world. There you go. Then, uh, at a certain point, uh, I want everyone to jump at the same time and see if we can't just burst through. You know, the people... I know everyone's talking about heaven. Everybody wants to get to heaven. I don't understand why we don't see the planet Earth as fucking paradise. People will tell you, well, this place is hell. This place is an awful place. There's pain. There's suffering. Even the Buddha himself said all life is suffering. Have you ever seen another fucking planet out there that looks like it's slightly fucking decent to live on? You go anywhere else, you got no air, no water, and you're freezing your nuts off. <laughs> Why can't we sit down and go... The place that we've found in all this vastness of freezing cold space, there is this tiny blue paradise. I don't understand why human beings don't make a bigger deal. I can't imagine that we're not walking down the street saying to each other, this fucking place is great. From the fucking Mount Everest to fucking Hawaii. We got it all here. And yet people are pissed off. People are bummed out. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. You live in the only fucking known place in the entire vastness of eternity. As far as fucking we know, in all these directions of light years and light years, you live in the only fucking place that anything can be. Anything that isn't a cold fucking rock. Or a hot ass fucking lava thing. And this ain't as good enough for people. We need more. We need a big screen TV. We're out of our fucking minds. We are a crazy fucking race of people. Now I want to tell you right now. I'm willing to put everybody together in a giant mosh pit. I mean, we could be having so much fucking fun here. Instead of having fucking 
wars and fighting with each other and being jealous and fucking scrapping. We could be making a giant fucking mosh pit. We could take one Ethiopian baby and just fucking crowd surf him all the way across the state of Texas. You don't think the entire plant would be going fucking ape shit at this? I'm going to Texas and I'm going to be fucking standing there as one guy starting this. If everybody else wants to come in, it's up to them. Uh, here's a young lady I watched go to sleep last night. Brazilian Julie. Hello, Julie. Hi, Mr. B. Congratulations, Fezzy. Keep it going. He's doing I, well. I know. He's doing great. Um, I just wanted to ask, Mr. B, can I live in your neighborhood when we have moved to Texas? Yeah, you can. Yay! I'm going to tell you this. If we get in a giant mosh pit like this and I look over, you're next to me. I'm going to inappropriately touch you. Okay, great. No. So down. Thanks. All right, my friend. All right. Keep it going, Fezzy. I do want to just point that out. If, if everyone in the earth gets in a giant mosh pit, don't start grabbing ass. Just <laughs> fucking be cool. And I don't want to hear one person say it's hot. Yes, I know it's fucking hot. We're in Texas. Let's not make a big... I'm not saying you have to live there forever. We're just starting a big mosh pit and then we're going on. You know what? Uh, so uh, hopefully... Yeah, we're going to have a barbecue when it's over. We're going to have steaks, ribs, pork chops, every kind of meat down there. We'll kill every uh, animal in Texas and eat it. <laughs> and that includes... Uh, I'm not going to say because he's the president of the United States still. I think afterwards, I think you can say whatever you want about him in like three weeks. All right, we're going to break here. Fezzi uh, is now over 24. Is it 24 hours, Fezzi, or 25? And I've never seen you do better at work. Never seen you do better. You're the only person I know without an inner life. I think that's what's uh, helped you and had you able to do this. Uh, so we'll take a break. We're back. Ron and Fez. Ron and Fez. XM202. No sleep till. This is the true story. I remember the guy that first injected blow into my own. The true story. And I fucking hate his guts in hell wherever he is. Of a group of strangers. You know, and unlike uh, a lot of people, what they think about Brooklyn and, and you know... I never been shot. Picked to live in a house and work together. You know, my my ex wife was uh, into the domination thing, and have their lives taped to find out what happened when people stop being polite. No, you're mad. I am because not. of the fucking the fact that I'm right and you have some guilt about that shit and you can't make a fucking joke about that shit. Don't fucking try to play me or that and start getting real. You drink piss. You touch shit. This is the real world, Brooklyn. Oh, mama mia, this is crazy. It's Ron and Fez show. There it is. It's uh, Real World Brooklyn with all our Brooklyn buddies. Uh, speaking of which, we got to thank Mafia Life, uh, Chris, for stopping in here late last night as we did the overnight show, uh, bringing us uh, Spumane Gardens uh, pizza. This is the best pizza because it's upside down. I don't know why that they think that the most impressive thing in the world is the cheeses on the bottom. Uh, it's a delicious uh, pizza, but the fact that the cheese is on the bottom for some reason, freaks them out as if it was some natural uh, occurrence that took place. All right, the Ron and Fez show. Fez is about, I believe now, 25, 26 hours into his no um, talking role. So I came off uh, Twilight Zone, that uh, Deb scene, and uh, he's found himself completely caught up into this. And Sheepy, you've watched him the whole time, and you swear to us yes. that he hasn't made as much of, of a sound. No, not at all. Now, uh, I know for a fact that I couldn't do this, and I don't know another human being that could. I, I don't understand how he's not talking. Even when he was so mad today, too. I thought he was going to scream. Yeah. And unfortunately now, I saw our old buddy the rooster has uh, stopped in, and Fez won't be able to say hi to him. Because he, he can't talk. It's sad. 
It is sad, isn't it? It's sad what happens out there. Why are you looking like you're crying? You're tired? So you tired. still wearing the same underwear? Yeah, I didn't change yet. I, I do have a spare, but... All cum crust it? No. No. Maybe. I don't know. Nothing happened between you two last night? No. We, we didn't. Sorry. Well, that, you made a mistake. <laughs> because that's what really this uh, <laughs> that was... whole thing was about. It was on camera all night. So? Porn.com. <laughs> you could be part of IM18.com. <laughs> I can't believe some of the things I have to read. <laughs> Bang my we have great stuff. You know, out of all the sites, that's the ones they're most proud of. Bang my stepmom, <laughs> and I am eighteen. It's thrilling when we wait for girls to turn eighteen years old, and then see what their vaginas look like. <laughs> now it's your eighteenth birthday. Let's take a good long look at that <laughs> vagina of yours. I bet it's perfect. I know you're going to disagree with me here, uh, but there's very few poor ones. I mean, you really have to go out of your way to ruin a vagina. Really? Mm-hmm. You're not a big fan? I've seen some bad ones. What do you like, cock? Uh, well, I like vaginas. Too. I I don't know. I don't really like looking at cock. But... Would, you, would, would your dream thing to be a vagina with a set of balls, is that exactly what you would like? So that while you're banging a chick, <laughs> you can reach down and play with her big hairy nuts? <laughs> They'd be in the way. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. <laughs> All right, Ron and Fez show, uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, we're on XM uh, 202, Sirius 197. We are the only show in the history of radio with a silent uh, partner. Uh, one of the people on the show doesn't speak, and it's a radio show. Now, I remember when uh, Penn... Uh, did a radio show. What's his first name? The the comic pen. Jillian, isn't it? No, wait. Pen Gillette. It's Pen Gillette. Yeah. Uh, he didn't call it the Pen and Teller show. He just called it the Pen Show, and he went on from there. But in this case, uh, it's the Ron Fez show. One partner in a teller like uh, state. Now, at one time in radio, back in the thirties and forties, there was a guy who did a uh, ventriloquist act. On the radio. So he would sit there <laughs> on the radio, and you know that fucker was moving his lips. Who's going to stop him? He's on the radio. And yet people, this was how naive people were in the United States. They were like, this motherfucker's crazy. He's <laughs> such a good ventriloquist. Uh, You're not thinking that he's not cheating? I am. All right, I'm going to do something for you right now. I'll do a ventriloquism act. Hi, I'm here with Charlie. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Hi, Charlie. Hey, Ron. What's up? You're really good. Oh, yeah, well... Watch this. I'm drinking water uh, when uh, when he sings. Ready? Show me the way to go home. And I'm drinking water now. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. It's amazing. Yeah, well, my grandfather used to sing that song. <laughs> he was a man with fruit. That's maybe what I would do. Fill up a fucking uh, station wagon with a bunch of fruit. Go driving around selling it. Uh, Rick. Rick, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, boys. What's going on today? What do you say, pal? Hey, if the fucking crew from Three's Company was to show up today, that motherfucker, he would be singing like a damn group of fucking canaries. Well, you're putting him down because he happens to be a big, big fan of Three's Company. But isn't almost all that show dead? I would like to know this. Is there a sitcom that is completely dead? I'm going to guess uh, I Love Lucy. The four principals are dead. And then they didn't have any... Other people beyond that, right? Little Richie's still alive. All right, so... Damn, I wish he was dead. That would have been perfect if the kid was dead. I uh, I want a completely dead sitcom. Is Alice still alive from the Honeymooners? I heard some Yeah, one of them is still alive. I'm not sure. One of the wives is still alive, right? I thought it was Alice. But, uh, cause... Go Ask Alice was the <laughs> yeah. big fucking hit song that she did back in the 60s. By the way, uh, AJ's here today, and I've asked for months for my producers to come up with some big musical number. You do. They don't do it. They don't do it at all. The other thing that I always find exciting was now that there's entirely dead sports teams. Like, there are famous championship sports team, but if you look back on it, everyone is dead from it. Like from like the 20s? Yeah, from the 20s. You get like the most famous Yankees team of all time. 
27 Yankees, they've all been dead for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, different football teams, basketball teams. It just lets you know just how temporary everything is. And I'll even watch a movie, and it's very weird because you can do this in New York City, and you'll see all the same buildings that are there now, but you know the entire crowd must be dead because the movie was shot <laughs> in the 30s, and it's, you know, Fifth Avenue, and everybody's mulling around. And you're like, oh, well, all these people are dead. But then you see Tiffany's, and I walk past that every day. And I'm like, Tiffany's must have uh, just seen just billions of people come and go. Won't even matter. Tiffany's, the building of Tiffany's is more important than the decades of human life. Mike, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, the, uh, the Three Stooges, they're all dead. All the Three Stooges are dead, and then even the uh, people that were like the Fourth and Fifth Stooges, those Curly kind of Joe people. Curly Joe died? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Curly Joe was uh, long gone. Ed, you're on the Run of Fez show. How about Family Affair? They got to all be dead now. Uncle Bill, I believe, is dead. Mr. French, dead. Buffy, dead. Not sure about Jody. If I had to guess, I would say uh, that Jody still alive and just in mourning just every day of his life i can't believe my entire family is gone i'm an orphan uh bill bill you're on the run of fez show yeah ron i think everybody from the sitcom amos and andy is dead now the odd thing there loved amos hated andy could (laughs) not i've never done that with a team before where i just adored one person now, uh, and hate it the other. Now, uh, coming up at the 2 o'clock hour, our own Fez Watley is able to uh, write to you again? Yes. Uh, by the way, I heard uh, a long time ago from Dave that Earl was on his way back. And I don't understand uh, why he would make an announcement that he couldn't back up. Oh, I know why. Uh, the world of radio of building an anticipation of uh, playing theater of the mind for people means nothing to him. Talk to the wife yet, Dave? A uh, little bit this morning. And what'd she say to you? Um, she was fine, I mean, mm-hmm. this, this morning. Again, doesn't he understand the anticipation of radio? Doesn't get it whatsoever. And my point today, uh, Dave... Uh, well, I'll talk to you about it after the show. There's no sense in bringing you back onto the show. Here is, um, uh, let me go over here to Judy. Judy, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, guys. How you doing? Fezzy, I miss your voice so much. You have to say something. But I was thinking the original cast of the Little Rascals, the ones from way back with Jackie and everybody, I think they're all gone. Um, Those are yeah, movie I don't, serials, though. That's I, not sitcom. Yeah, you are right about that. You're both all uh, right, uh, but the but the truth is that uh, I think there might be one of them still alive. Well, I know this, of course. Uh, uh, the guy who played one of the parts was th- was the guy who was just busted for murder of his wife uh, out there. He the, the guy who played Beretta. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. And he was in our arguing. Well, you know, it's all the same. It's almost like Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship. I can't believe that you guys have fucking left me with Sheepy as somebody for me to interact with today. I I fucking am not. I I have blown this off for the entire day. I'm going to fucking rain shit at fucking three o'clock. Rain fucking shit here. Is this Earl? Come on in, Earl. Get the fuck in. How many meetings do you think have been going on today? A lot. About this? A lot. Here in the time of the merger, is this the way that, is this the reflection you think ONA won of their career? No, not at all. Is this the reflection of fucking Ron and Fez won of their career? Absolutely not. Is there any possible fucking way for you to have a day that you're more of an asset than a liability? How long did the bit go on before you hit the fucking floor? I honestly, I don't remember. I really don't. How about the fact that I come in here today and see the bosses and see fucking Danny fighting for his life? 
I mean, it was just... acting like you were a fucking assault victim. How the fuck can you just not hit the floor and bounce back up like a regular fucking person? How, why the hell do you need to leave here in an ambulance? I was because apparently the hospital thinks there's nothing wrong with you. If they even thought there was something slightly wrong with you, you'd still be fucking sitting there. Do you know who I did fucking radio with today? Myself. And it was the easiest fucking day I've had in years. It's the first fucking day that I can say to myself, well, that's not, that, uh, I, that didn't sound fucking stupid to me. The fuck am I doing? Did I not just talk to you yesterday? About being fucking seen differently by these fucking people. You fucking have yourself. And you know what everybody was saying? He's done this for years. Your reputation and every dumb stunt from NEW on got regurgitated today. So all the people that you wanted to impress by your abilities to book fucking stars and produce interview shows are out the win window. And you're just remembered as the fucking crazy guy who throws microphones and faints and fucking uh, is a joke as a person. That's the beauty of it, Earl. That's the fucking beauty of where you've taken yourself. And you set out to do it. You were in a fucking mood yesterday. You were in a mood today. I mean, it's, you were in your glory as I walk up the street and see them putting you into a fucking ambulance. And I say to the guy, uh, is he OK? And the guy goes like this. Yeah. Like, I can't believe I'm over here putting a fucking healthy man in a wheelchair. I mean, I didn't. Even what is it like? I mean, I, what is it like to be fucking known like this? You no, know, I mean, I was. I was out. I don't know. I don't even remember it happening. Your life? No. My is that life, what you most forget you about? Know. You're a fucking grown ass man. I know. I'm a Stop fucking feigning constantly. Stop acting like everything is so goddamn important. Stop drawing attention of the fucking bosses. To the negative shit. You think I want to come walking in here today and see O&A taking even the slightest bit of shit because of one of the guys on my show fucking hit uh, the dirt on their team? Do you remember that you were going to be the hero today? That's what you said to me. I am going to be the hero of the show. Fez will not be talking because he is now under my protection. Now, I heard fucking Stalker Patty taking that same ass juice on the show and handling it like a champ. You on the other uh, you pass out like an English woman. Like an English woman from the heat. I didn't pass out from that. Yes, apparently. you fucking did. Nobody hurt you. Nothing apparently happened but you and your inconsistent lifestyle. And instead of fucking you taking the responsibility... You put it on another 15 fucking people who were in here. Bat I'm fucking telling you because you missed it as you're being hauled out. I'm telling you in here, people are in here battling for themselves and trying to explain. And I walked into the fucking room in the middle of it, interrupted their meeting going, I have seen this guy do this 15 fucking times. Then I used the metaphor of the fanning goat and actually had to YouTube fanning goat. And show that if you yell at goats, uh, these tiny little goats, they will pass out. And I heard a program director go like this. Oh, so like a fainting goat. I go, yeah. It's like when an octopus throws ink into the water. I go, I'd rather he squirted ink out of his ass and an EMT wouldn't have to be called. I don't know what to do with you anymore, bro. I don't know what to fucking do with you anymore. John, John, you're on running Fez. 
John, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, I'd like to point out when you asked Earl at what part of the bit did he not get up, he said he didn't remember. In other words, he knows he was full of crap. Earl, you you, take a you got a free day, oh, Earl. I, I don't you remember. Got, you got uh, a chance to ride around in a nice red truck. You went. You got to wear a nice apron, get your head taken pictures of, and then I believe you got juice and a cookie. You had the time of your life. I mean, I was embarrassed by the whole situation. I didn't want to get wheeled away at all. I mean, it was. Why can't you stay on your pins, big man? What was. Let me tell you something. I woke up at like 1030 this morning. I called everybody's fucking phone and couldn't get an answer until I called the deaf mutes. And then Sheepy answered for him. Then Sheepy's trying to explain to me what's going on with my team. And then not one of you guys would take the fucking phone from him. I was annoyed with you all then. Then I walk over. I turn on ONA. They're doing great. They're killing. The fucking Mark Marin bit they did was fucking amazing. And I go, oh, shit, now they got to follow this up with my guys. I hope my guys at least make it entertaining. By the time I walk here, there's an ambulance out front. I go, don't let that be for us. Don't. As I'm having a fucking fine cigar. I'm walking, don't let that be for us. And there you are, being wheeled out. Not even on a gurney, but in a fucking wheelchair, which no head or brain victim would be in. You'll never go. You've seen that um, uh, the Steelers game. The QB, uh, Roethlisberger, gets a fucking concussion. No one puts him in a wheelchair. They have him in a neck brace. They're fucking tying him down. They did the same thing with you that they would do with an old lady who kept claiming that somebody was peeking in her window. They put, put her in a wheelchair. They take her for a ride, have her talk to some nice people, and that's it. I can't believe that you're only using the word embarrassed today. I can't believe that you're not mortified that you are back exactly where you were 10, 12 years ago at NEW. I mean, uh, you talked about the same way, the same exact way. And here's the very funny thing. And this fucking reminds me of my life. So I'm, I'm listening to fucking music on my way in. So then I'm like, I see Earl. Then I come in here, I get on the thing. And I, I look, I get one message is all I got. Not from anybody on my fucking team. I have a thing from Franklin. And it always says, do you happen to have on the ONA show? So instead of hearing from my own staff, I hear from somebody who wants to just fucking gossip about Earl and wants to feel all bad like something has happened to Earl. The fucking piling on of it. You got to feel like you're at a fucking career cul-de-sac right now, my friend. Now, it looks like I'm heading out west. I've got a couple ranch offers right now and a tanning salon. I don't know what I'm doing. I might be selling used cars in, uh, in Arizona. Uh, here is Jim. Jim, you're on a fez. Hey, Ron. I asked how you're doing, but I know how you're doing, working with a bunch of pussies. I just got a comment for Earl. Have you never been in a fight before? You get in a fight and you get knocked out and you got to rush to the hospital or what? I, this is the thing that I love about Earl. He is a guy who's ready to sit there and say that somebody on a sports team is dogging it, that somebody on a sports team has no heart. The Jets have let him down. Uh, Earl, you're beyond the Jets. You're having a fucking Detroit Lions year. I mean, I mean basically, I, I, don't, I don't even remember what happened, but I remember just trying to get up, and I could not get up. Then why aren't you still in the hospital? Why would they let a paralyzed person I, I didn't say walk paralyzed. out? I just said I was like I couldn't get up, and I just couldn't get my wits about me. You haven't had your wits about you since I've uh, known you. Since I've known you. And then they were calling for everyone. I was like, I, and I kept saying, I'm fine. But they're like, we don't want to take any chances. I was like, but I'm fine. Oh, it's their fault. I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. It is I'm, someone's I'm, fault. I'm talking to the guy whose fault it is. I told you how to handle yourself today. I told you how to handle yourself since this merger. Now, I'm fucking sitting there talking to the bosses, 
saying, you are going to get this from this guy. He'll go, he'll start to lose, he'll faint, and he'll find himself at the hospital. And they said, how is he still there? And I explained the pre-Obama world. I go, you got to understand, he came here from pre-Obama times. Uh, Brad, Brad, you're on Ron Fez show. Hey, Ron, I got a great idea for you for a new job. Yeah. You got to give you got to give up uh, Al Dukes a call. Go over to WFAN. You start up the Ron and the Mad Dog show. Well, uh, I'm going to be quite honest. I can only talk so much about sports before I would actually start and fucking shoot myself in the head. I would be the first sports show that you heard enough about sports. Sports is stupid. I can't just talk about one topic. All right, here, now, by the way, because uh, I wasn't listening, I wasn't here for your act, but I'm, I'm getting this. He couldn't even say a word. He couldn't speak. It was nuts. He just sat there with his eyes rolled back. You never told everybody that you're okay. You just fluttered your eyes, which I saw you do before. Now, I had to sit in here with the bosses and explain the, to them the day that I yelled at you and you feign it and hit your head. I had to explain today that we that the um, studio didn't smell good, so we had Febreze. And then I had to say the day that you threw the fucking microphone. I had to say the fucking day that you refused to ski down the slopes. I went through what I called the decades of failure fucking tour because I don't want to see O&A and Jimmy fucking dragged down in this. I don't want to see Steve dragged down this. I don't want to see Danny dragged down in this. Neither do I. I. None of those guys. And I. By just so you know this, in a corporate sense, the fucking day, the, the moment the EMTs got called, all that shit was going to become official. This is all official now. It's one hundred percent. Outside of any fucking thing. And I'm telling you now, I stood in the middle of the fucking uh, room and did it. I said, this fucking guy is a crazy hypochondriac. I go, he's out of his fucking mind. And you were, you were going to be the booking guy. That was going to be your thing. Uh, here is, um, here's Stan the man, and I, I hope it stays, yeah. Stan, go ahead, buddy. Ronnie B. Ronnie yeah. B. Hey, uh, just had to let you know from, uh, outside world looking in, uh, Earl is the strangest cat, man. Uh, his life's been on for 12, 13 years on the radio, and he is just the strangest dude I've ever heard of. I don't know how you put up with him. But uh, maybe that's your decision to make, Ronnie B. You know, maybe get out of him. Get well, of him. you know what? I mean, I told that to the bosses today. I said I didn't do the hiring and because they are like, what is he doing here? I go, I don't do the hiring. I don't do the firing. I'm a fucking guy who just comes in and talks on the radio. And today, Earl, I did it without anybody. Nobody. And guess what? It's not a big fucking deal. Let's stop acting like it is. Uh, Matt, Matt, you're on Ron Fez show. Hey, Ron. Yeah. You said the word that I've been waiting to hear, which is hypochondriac. Now, I'm an EMT in Georgia, okay? Let me tell you this. If the mechanism of injury is such that there is suspicion of concussion, there is possible neck injury, anything along those lines, nobody's leaving the hospital, number one. Number two, not... They would not have wheeled him out of here. Now, number three, hold on. Number yeah. three, yeah. especially given the liability that's involved, because it happened on your property, you know, it, it's a corporate issue now. Uh, he's there under observation. First of all, he wouldn't even be seen yet. If you, you know, It's completely impossible from a professional perspective. You yeah. said hypochondriac. I've been waiting, I don't know, three years for you to say that, which is clearly what he is. He, Thank you for finally it, saying it, but from a professional perspective, it's bullshit. He, yeah. What what he would rather do, and we all had gym class with this guy who the second gym class started 
would pull a muscle or uh, have stomach cramps, bump his head. It was always something a little different, but it was everything to get out of gym class. And Earl sees the world as gym class. The only time he's happy is in the middle of the night when nobody else is here and he's wandering around by himself. He's happy as a fucking pig and shit uh, when that happens. Happy as a pig in shit. Now, Earl, I, and I kid you not, I mean, those bosses had to come fucking 10 blocks up here to run a fucking CSI investigation on all these innocent people. Danny, Steve, Owen A, Jimmy, who said what, who told them to do what, whose idea was the bit, and uh, did you know, you know, how did he fall, how did he hit, why would you push another fellow employee I mean, it just doesn't even make sense. Now, do you don't think that's with their bosses above them and all the lawyers? Of course. And in that thing, I'm proud to fucking say my statement was I wasn't here, but I know he's faking. It's exactly what I said. And they go, what? And I go, I've seen this 15 fucking times. I go, I have video of Dave beating him on one-on-one -on -one and him uh, falling down and acting like he was having a heart attack and a stroke. I go, uh, softball people will tell you the same thing. He's done it inside and outside of his life. If there's any responsibility, if there's any reason for stress, he'll fucking lay down and count the lights. You're Iron mm. Mike Sharp, my mm. friend. You're the Iron Mike Sharp of radio. Charles, Charles, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hi, Ronnie. Uh, I don't understand at this point why it's painfully obvious that he's faking it. He should admit it, and, you know, he owes that to all the people that work there. This is what he, he wants to do. He wants to say, oh, yeah, Ron and Fez? Oh, yeah, o and i will get you. No, no, I no. will get you. Not at all. This is a ballless version of... Of a backstab. And I would right. tell you the truth. I would have so much more fucking respect for you. If I came in here one day. And you jumped out. And put a fucking knife into my kidneys. I would. I'd say. My last words would be congratulations Earl. Congratulations. You've done it yourself. Instead you'd rather fall on a knife. Uh, and the fucking knife say. Uh, Ron and Fez and O&A on it. No not at all. The last thing I ever want to do. Ever I put do. my reputation without hearing a word. I walked in with the bosses as they're meeting with ONA and said, I haven't heard anything. He's faking. And he will be back here at the end of the show because no hospital will keep him. And they'll go, well, how are you saying that? I go, it happens. This is what he does. Quit being a pussy, Earl. Being a I mean. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm like, I didn't want to go. They Do me a me. favor, Earl. Go get a knife and put it in my kidneys so I'm I can gonna, respect you. I'm not gonna stab, stab me no. to death so I can say I'm proud of you. I'm like, never, ever. With my last breath, I will kiss your forehead and whisper, you've become a man. Uh, here is, um, uh, let me go over here to uh, Justin. Justin, you're on the Ron Fez show. I'd just like to say, Earl, you are a fucking loser. You are so self-centered because, oh, well, I am, uh, I, I'm embarrassed. You should be embarrassed for you, Ronnie B., the ONA staff, and your staff. Mm. I'd be mortified. Embarrassed is too small of a word. I'd be fucking mortified if I was perceived this way. I would not be able to, uh... To handle it. All right. We got just this message. Admit it, eggshell. Admit it. Just say that I'm Mr. Glass. Mm -hmm. Mr. I Glass. look and act like... And you, I, I knew that you would come in here not even being able to spit it out. Not even to spit it out. I mean, I'm still trying to gauge really what happened. I, I will I tell you this. I remember what happened. Dave had hot sauce down his pants... And stayed at the hospital longer than you did. From hot sauce on his pants. A, a little bit of hot sauce touches his asshole. 
which was another day that annoyed me. Because I think that if hot sauce gets into your fucking ass, the most you should do is grab a spare rib, rub it in your ass, and finish your meal. You don't fucking go to the hospital and make a big deal out of it. Uh, Pam. Pam, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hi, Uncle Ronnie. Hi, says he's not talking. Um, I think I'm just going to add, basically, to your point and Charlie's point, I think, was the caller before the last. Oh, if you really want respect from the listeners, um, if you're really Ronnie's best friend, then you'll own up to everything, you know? You just take responsibility. And, you know, you won't just be remembered as a fuck up you'll be remembered as the guy who finally took responsibility you know just would you like to earl i mean i'm and i'm taking responsibility I'm have like, you talked to the bosses yet i, I again i just got back i I'll i talk want to you, anybody i'll talk to anybody and everybody and i want you to tell them that you're a feigning goat and that if there's any stress at all you will do anything you can do to hurt the people around you I, and here's who bothers anybody. me most. This is what bothers me most of all. And I'm not even fucking kidding about this. This kid, Danny, buzzed his ass out of the entire ONA staff because I'm a fucking observer. This kid works his ass off. For him to sit there and feel stressed today, like, oh my God, is my career ending just as I'm getting it started, is what fucking pissed me off the most. Danny. Because that's the kind of guys that the bosses throw under the bus. You know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, I don't want to, you know, to get the radio stars in trouble. Who else do I got? Oh, this, you know, kid. This is the, this happens historically. I'm not saying it happened today. The bosses were keeping their heads about them. They were going around questioning everyone. And believe me, when I came in yelling out fraud, the man's a faker. And Danny, Danny, I'm you know what I want to do? I want to leave here with you. I want to go to a fucking Korean deli, and I want you to do a slip and fall. And I'll come walking up, and I'll yell, "I'm this man's lawyer. Give me a hundred and forty dollars. We're going to keep it as small as we can, and we're going to do it at ten different Korean delis. And if we leave there with seven, eight hundred dollars, I'll feel like we had a huge day, and we're going to spend that the rest of our life. And I want you yelling my back, my neck, and my back, my neck, my back." Uh, Anthony, you're on Ronnie Fez. Yeah, Ronnie, how does Earl not walk into the studio, you know, defending Danny? Hey, it was an accident. I slipped and fall. And how does he not walk his ass down to the other building and tell them, hey, it was no big deal. I went to the hospital as a precaution. I'm fine. You know, he comes in. I don't know what's going on. It's I don't know what happened. If now, if he deal, even... Some guys, everybody's fine. This fucking brain damage, this lost time that he <laughs> claims that he has, if that were true... He'd be in the fucking hospital right now. They're not letting fucking people walk out of the hospital who have hit their head and have bruises on their brains. They would worry, oh my God, if I let this guy go and he bleeds to death from internal fucking skull uh, injuries, the, the family will own this hospital. They let him go within three hours. And he doesn't, he doesn't man up and say... Hey, I'm no, he gets in a wheelchair, lets them bring him downstairs instead of saying, hey, guys, I'm fine. At least I can do his walk down. Can you, yeah. you, know, can you imagine a healthy man who would let himself sit in a fucking wheelchair? <laughs> well, that was the idea. That was the EMT. That we have to do this. And then you say to them, I am not getting in your fucking wheelchair. I'm a healthy man. I have a job to do. I have an obligation. And I, you are fucking still wearing that thing around your hand. You I came back to, in here. I, I would be. Forgot to take it I off. would be chewing that off my wrist like I was a coyote. That would, to me, this is a gigantic thing that just says failure I, to wrap just, around your wrist. Just forgot to take it off. You might as well leave it on forever. Leave it on forever. Uh, Tony, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Hey, Earl. Um, you are a complete liability. I have a guarantee you have no job within a week, and I hate to say it, but I think it's going to come true. you gotta, you got to just do the right thing, man. You're a mess. You're going to be fired very shortly. Guaranteed. You know where if we were Japanese, where you'd be right now, right? Yeah. Where? I'd probably be, I'd be dead. Be, from who? From one of my own guys. 
no, yourself. You would do the right thing. I'm going to leave here with you today, Earl. We're going to pick out a sword. And then we're going to walk you in the middle of Central Park. I'm going to throw salt around. I'm going to put, uh, make a nice little spot for you. And then you are going to fall on your own sword. And I will call you a man of honor. I'll call you a man of honor that day. And I am going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the absolute right thing. Absolute and complete the right thing today. Today. And what is that? Hmm? You're going to fall on, fall on a sword? It, it, it be all in, though? Yes, I will. I don't mean... I mean literally fall on no, a sword. No, not literally fall on a sword, but... What are you going to do? I'm going to call the bosses. And tell them that you've made up stuff like this 15 no, times. I didn't, I'm not going to make anything I'm going to say. Hey, these guys are not... And the reason why they're not responsible is that you make this stuff up, and you have for years. Well, I mean, even when I was in the in the, I remember what I was telling, uh, what I was told Sam. I was like, make sure to let those guys, let the bosses know that they, the the guys are not at fault. No, I, because I you make this stuff up. Insisted on it. Listen to me, because you make it up. That's the right thing. That's the right thing to say. I am some kind of a crazy attention fucking whore who needs to do things like this. They're going to start and call you Frank Weak Sauce. That's going to be the nickname that you're stuck with. That's going to be the nickname. Tom, you're on the Run Fez show. Yeah, Mr. Bennington. Yes, I sir. I think uh, you should uh, just go ahead and give him a broom. Changes his name to Jasper. He has 12 hours from 3 to 3 to clean the place up, and that could be his new job. No pressure, no stress. I can't wait to get off Wyke to see my baby. Uh, Brian, you're on Ronnie Fest Show. How you doing, Ronnie? Long-time listener. Great. What can we do for you? I'd like to uh, weigh in. Uh, it's really funny. I'm seeing retired EMT and now a physician. EMTs, especially city EMTs, are not jumping out of their skins to throw somebody in a chair. It was very poignant, as you said. They wheeled them out. There's an old saying, ABC, ambulate before carry. If somebody can walk, they'll walk. Second, unless somebody is drunk, on drugs, or a severe, obvious head trauma, they do not haul people off to the hospital against their will. It's still America. Uh, let me tell you something, Brian. I saw Earl out front, and as he's sitting in the chair, he's basically acting like he doesn't recognize me. And I go, what happens? I don't know. Ron, I don't know what happened. And I had fucking E-Rock and the EMT. Now, this is also the beauty. They don't even turn the lights off to take this fucking failure away. Because the last thing they want to do is make some fucking cab pull over somebody who's doing an honest fucking day's work. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Put your fail bracelet back on. I can't put it back on. And I'm telling... I have to stop this. I have to stop the non-talking thing. You are letting this continue, even though... There goes the fucking bit. Even though... There goes the bit, Earl. I can't take it, I swear. Oh, my, Jesus. My, my you fucking had it. blood pressure is through the fucking roof. But you would do great. Are, why are you letting this continue? Why Why won't you admit that you fainted again, fucker? I didn't, I didn't faint. You just ruined the bit. God damn it. You're... You're going to get on the phone with the bosses at Sirius and tell your own side of the story, which isn't true. That's what you're going to fucking do. We know you too fucking well. Steve, I don't know what happened. Exactly. The last thing I remember was doing my job. And the next thing I know, Opie Finafrenes were laughing and I didn't know where I was.
You get on that phone and start saying fucking, I don't know what happened. I was in the fucking room. ONA asked you what you remember. You remembered everything. You remembered every single event that well, had I happened. Said, no, I said, I remember what You I just said. got a fucking, you just ruined his bit. And he had it. He had this. My heart is pounding out of my fucking chest. And I, know, I can't believe you gave it up. I couldn't take it anymore. I know what he's going to do, and I can't... If, if I go into another hour, then I can't even write fucking notes, and he's going to get on the phone with people. I can't take it. I can't do it. I can't let him get away with it. Then I can't even have Sheepy speak for me. Uh, he does it poorly anyway. Would you be willing to live as a mole person underground? No. Go down in the subway system and live hand to mouth with the mole people. Yes or no? No. You said you would do what it would take to make this right. Well, I'm, I'm going to. Will you? Will you, right will you make the the I'm right not, thing is to live as a mole person? I'm not going to. So that I can go to these people and say, wait, you can't take the word of a mole person. They live underground. They don't see the sunlight. Fez, the fucking bit's ruined. Your bit. It's it's gone. It's gone. Let's restart it right now. Just right now. Boom. You don't you don't talk anymore. I can't. Seven do days from now. I can't do it again. First night was freaking murder. Was it? Oh, it got worse as the night went on. It was the strangest isolated feeling. I mean, I mean, I know I get I I, I isolate myself, but this was the first time it was actually lonely for me. Like the only person in the world who's not allowed to talk. It actually got lonely. It was bizarre. I wanted you to go to the prom with Helen Keller. Hey, did you see the rooster here? I can say hi to him. Hey, rooster. Good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, he's doing great, too. And AJ Dynamite's here. Fred from Brooklyn. Of course, part of the new Brooklyn show. And I know everyone's going to say Fez didn't come through, but I you could... Failed. I could not let that phone call happen. And it was going to happen. Got to sit my ass on the phone every, every phone in here. Don't even bother. Let the whole house of cards come down. That's where my fucking head is. Bill, Bill, you're on my fez. Hey, you know, I know that if I legitimately fell down and got legitimately hurt and then somebody was berating me and in my face telling me that I was lying, I would be, to quote Earl, going ape shit on them back. Earl's voice sounds like a little kid who got his hand caught in the candy jar and people are calling him out. Did you take the cookie? Um, no. You can hear it in his voice. He's, he is embarrassed. He won't admit it. I mean, he admits it, he's embarrassed, but he won't admit that he's lying. He won't just confess and, and and every time that you say that he's made stuff up in the past 15 times he never says no that's not true it's bullshit I, I was always hurt I've always fainted or whatever he's just he he knows it he you knows he's busted and he can't he can't face himself it's not that I was just like I'm telling what, you're gonna do the right thing I'm right gonna do the absolute right thing and that's living with the mole people <laughs> living as a mole man I don't know about Or showing your hospital chart severe reaction to ass spray. Which Patty took like a champ. Hmm, I'm going to do the right thing. Which Absolutely. is what? What is the right thing? Are you going to say it was your fault? I'm not going to let those guys go down. No, not at all. I'm not going to let I'm not going to let I'm going to do the right thing. But you, you can't say specifically what that right thing is. Well, Earl, all I have done is try to tell you how to get over with these people, right? And I stood in a fucking room for them today without the slightest bit of proof. I, because I didn't hear it, I didn't see it, I just walked in and said, Earl is lying. That's what he does. 
and I gave them every case that you did it before. Every fucking case. Including when you uh, accused that team of uh, raping you down south. I go, he wasn't raped. He loved it. <sighs> Brian, Brian, you're on running Fez. Earl, why are you so self-centered? It always has to be about you. What are you going to do when, if they suspend the money to kick them off the air and you're responsible for probably half a million subscriptions lost? Why is it always about you? You fucking faker. You ruined the show. You ruined everything. And wait, you know what? <clears throat> is this your way of getting back at Obi for not invite, him not inviting you to his wedding? You... Is this it? No, is this now, you, now you're even with Opie? It all makes sense. No, not at all. Don't... Got him? No. No, no, no. You got him back? No. And Fez, now you failed. It's something that you were doing really well at. Yeah, it was the one thing I could do. Keep my fat mouth shut. Now that's gone. It's odd. You've gotten gayer sounding. My throat feels really weird. My th uh, not, not now, so you know what that might be from Sheepy, pissing down it. Actually, it's not my throat. It's more my tongue. My <clears throat> tongue feels really bizarre. From having your tongue in his ass? No, just from... Ah. No, no, that's not it. No, that's not good at all. No. And Sheepy, what were you doing? Just arching your ass back into him? <laughs> oh, the sickness that must have took place. By the way, what time did uh, fucking Dave get back in last night? I think it was about 5.30. Useless to me today. Useless to me. So you did the rimming and... There was no rimming or... I don't know how it works in your world. Do you expect one back? I because think... Because if there was like... If I was involved in the rim job world, I'd always be like this first. <laughs> Because I don't know if I'd want to. And then I'd also probably want to be looking towards the TV. Well, it seems like anything, a common courtesy. What's that? Uh, to reciprocate. Yeah, but, you know. Who wants a fucking mouthful of guy ass? <sighs> Earl, are you fainting again? No. You sure? Positive. Not one test came back that you should have even been there, huh? You gave me a CAT scan. They, they what checked, about an aptitude test? They checked me out. They told me to see a doctor tomorrow, but otherwise I'm, I'm okay. Why would they tell you to see a doctor? You're at the fucking hospital. I, it's like, see your personal physician. I can't believe he wants to keep it going. I don't uh -huh. want to keep it I going. I can't believe I this is what made me fucking he's, talk. He's going to say that to the bosses. Exactly. I'm going to see my that. doctor tomorrow, so then they got to keep fucking following. That's what they do. Yes. You can't fucking, you can't blame guys for wanting to protect their own ass. I got, they're going to ask you what the doctor at the hospital said. You're going to tell them that, and this thing's going to keep going, and there's not a fucking thing wrong with I, you. I would play the, I'd play the, if you want to do the right thing, I'll play the part of Earl. So you ask me questions, Fez. Uh, Earl, what exactly did the doctor say at the hospital? He called me a faker and an idiot and told me to stop uh, faking all the time and uh, don't interrupt shows. Oh, okay, so there's no problem at all? No, the only problem is me being a big faker and a liar. Okay, case closed. This will go in your permanent mm. file. What do I care? I'll shit in that file right mm. now. I haven't done any. I haven't had done a good day of work ever. What do I care? That's what you have to say, Earl. Not that I have to go see my own doctor I, tomorrow. I didn't say I have. Yes, to, you that's did. What they, that's yes, what, but I'm saying by you saying that, you I'm, act like I'm, there's I'm, still something real I'm, I'm happening. Not, and if there was, I'm, that fucking doctor today would have told you uh, they don't let people with concussions walk out again i wasn't gonna say it I, i'm you know what i want to make you do i want you uh, to eat an entire fucking tin of spandy ziti i want you to sit down and eat uh, a fucking half an acre of spandy ziti i think it's still in the garbage bin Oh, 
What a fucking day. What a Friday it was. I'll tell you this. One thing I like doing is a show by myself. Just fucking sitting in here talking to myself. I had a ball. What I like to do is do it again with a blindfold on. <laughs> Next, I'm going to do it without a microphone, just fucking sitting at my, by myself at my house. Just talking to myself. Why bother even bringing it up to others? Why wouldn't you talk to me when I saw you out front today? Why did you fucking look at me like you were a, a fucking zoo animal that just got shot in the neck with a fucking dark? You asked me if I was okay. And what happened? And Do you and remember then, what you said to me? I'm, I, I know. You asked me what happened. I said, I don't remember. I don't remember what happened. You didn't know how you got in that chair. I didn't say that. I just You asked me what happened. I went, I don't remember. By that, I meant what happened to your career. Do you remember when that went wrong? And I can't believe this is the last fucking hour of the show today. I seriously don't give a fuck anymore. I seriously don't. There's no reason to. There's no reason to be the last person who gives a shit. Maybe my response to everybody should be fuck you and your fucking problems. Well, it's been building up for a while. It's been building up. You were just ready to do to shit the bed with serious. You were just ready to. You got the worst fucking reputation with them now. All the things that we covered up from you, for you all these years, they're all out now. They know who you are. And you don't mind. I mean, I I certainly mind. Totally mine. That they know who you are? They know who I am. I mean, they, they want it. This whole notion that I don't care is so wrong. What's that? This whole notion. It's, it's so wrong. I don't know what that means. So you feel sorry for yourself today? Huh? You fucking get Danny, O and A, and everybody on the fucking chopping block. I feel, I feel horrible Probably about even that. the Ron Fez That's show in the chat. But, but your problem is this notion that I don't care is what hurts me. No, I care about those guys. I care about you. I don't want anything bad to happen to, to them or to you. Ever. Ever. Don't tell us. Show us. And I will. No. You will, then you have to get back in time and not be the fucking fainting goat. Here's what I want you to do. I honestly want you to call fucking Opie, Anthony, and Jimmy and say, wait, did Ronnie B. walk into the middle of, a, of your meeting and sell me out with no facts so that they can tell you yes? Yes, he did. And he did it gleefully. He expounded. I was like Churchill talking about what a fucking maniac you were. It's the best I've ever been. Saying don't believe him. I wished it was. I wished it was a radio broadcast that was uh, being picked up by all the fucking English school children, so that they would be able to talk about it decades along. That's when Churchill was at his best when he brought up the fainting goat metaphor. Okay, that's it for me. Fez, sorry you failed. Another failure. Sorry, everyone. I think I could have done the week. Well, what good's that to us? None. That's like, that's like Tampa saying, you know what? I think we would have won the fucking Super Bowl if we just would have gotten the playoffs. All right. Two clean bills of health. You and the, Chris, uh, the Christmas kitten, uh, kitten are both healthy and ready to get back to normal. Make the, today your last PJ day. All right, Earl? You can stay in your PJs uh, today, but tomorrow I want you to start thinking. That's it for us. Good Lord, Willem, we'll be 